an inside look at baseball and a preview of today's game of the week. Brought to you by Low and Brow. When you want the taste of a truly great beer, there's really only one. Tonight, let it be Low and Brow. And by Commodore Computers. It's not how little you pay, but how much you get for the money. Hi again, everyone, and welcome to the Game of the Week. Len Berman in New York. Today, it's the Yankees and Angels or Cubs and Astros. On our pregame report, we'll have the top highlights of the week, including some strange bounces. And we will pay tribute to the late Charlie Lau. But first up, let's go out to the announcers for today's games, and let's start at Yankee Stadium with Vin and Joe. Thank you, Len. Everybody's heard about the tale of two cities, but really here in New York, it's baseball's tale of one city. They're really battling for the entertainment dollar here, the Yankees and the Mets. I, I guess the height was reached when the Mets had Strawberry Day and George and the Yankees had Digital Watch Day. I mean, the players are important, but let's have those promotions. Yeah, I think the count uh, on Strawberry Day was 28,000 at Shea, 51,000 for digital watches. So I guess the Yankees lead in, the, in a giveaway department. But what about ball players? The Mets are battling for first place with Dwight Gooden and Darryl Strawberry leading the way. And today, Phil Necro is pitching. Great for the senior citizens. And I guess the Yankees are relying more or less on the tradition of the pinstripers, the mark of success, even though they have been virtually buried, at least for the moment, by Detroit. Well, George battles Strawberry with Manningly and he says he's got Riho to go against Gooden so it is a battle of one city. Yep the tale of one city and with that let's go to Bob Costas and find out the tale from Chicago. All right Vin and Joe thank you like New York Chicago is a two team town last year it was owned by the White Sox with their championship in the American League West but this year the Cubs are making noise they're the leaders at this stage in the National League East here's their manager Jim Fry. Jim, there are people who say, no kidding this year, the Cubs have a chance. Well, we've got a good ball club. We have played well. We've got some good, solid hitting. Uh, our starters pitched well the first couple of weeks. Our bullpen has done well recently. I think we've got a good, strong ball club. People look at the National League East and they say, no one dominant team. How many victories do you think it'll take? Usually, uh, you got to figure 90 or 90 plus. Uh, if you get up around 90, you're going to be in the hunt all the way. If you had to isolate one key for the Cubs, what would it be? I would say that we got to keep a couple of our hitters healthy, a couple of the key guys healthy. Lee Smith certainly is a key to our ball club. That's Jim Fry, the manager of the Cubs. Let's go back now to Len Berman in New York. Thank you, Bob. The Houston side, they continue unhealthy. Six players, including Joe Sambito and Dickie Thon, are still on the disabled list. We'll have the news of the week when we continue in just a minute. I see your desk got a computer on it. Yeah, smart desk. Going to the game? Me, I don't need a computer. I just call Bird. What if Bird's not in? I wait till Bird's back. Who's playing? Detroit. You know, I don't know how I managed before. Well, the machines and I just don't mix. Know what I mean? Sure. I'll see you at the game. Yeah, actually, I've got a little more to do. Some people don't need an IBM computer on their desk. Is that you, Bird? The smart desk is for people who do. He's at the game. 1952, George Stephen invents the incredibly durable Weber kettle. Incredible. It soon becomes the best-loved way to broil burgers and roast the Thanksgiving turkey. We love it. But nobody loves cleaning out the ashes. We don't love that. Weber engineers, deep in thought, invent the one-touch system. Weber's one-touch opens to circulate heat and seal in the juices. Ooh. Weber's one-touch closes to put out the fire. Ah. Best of all, Weber's one-touch sweeps out all the ashes. Thank you. You're welcome. The Weber one-touch, only from Weber. from Honda. Own one and you own the road. Sports World makes big news. Undefeated Hector Macho Camacho battles Rafael Williams. Is the Macho Man with the devastating hands ready for this Latin American champion? A showdown inside the ring that will make headlines. NBC Sports is big news in May. Time now for the news of the week around Major League Baseball. There were some important comings and goings. There were some big home runs hit. And we have a civics lesson as well. Here goes. It was opening day for Willie Wilson, Willie Akins, and Jerry Martin as they came back from their drug suspensions. But it was an emotional farewell for Jim Palmer as he and the Orioles parted company. I still think I can pitch. 
Um, you know, I have the desire to do that. But um, I'm going to leave. Thank you very much for coming. And some pitchers think they can hit. Joaquin Andahar hit a grand slam. And so did Steve Carlton for the suddenly hot Phillies. Some hitters continued to hit. A milestone for Mike Schmidt as he belted home run number 400, the 20th player to do it. And one pitcher pitched a baseball oddity. Four strikeouts in one inning. Mario Soto did it as one of the third strikes got dropped. Well, the beat goes on in Detroit. The Tigers had another winning week as they continue to roll. Hot teams like Baltimore and Toronto just can't make up any ground. And our civics lesson of the week comes from Minnesota. Business leaders are buying thousands of tickets to keep the Twins in town. If they sell 2.4 million tickets this year, the Twins cannot break their Metrodome lease. But a ticket is not a body. Paid attendance the other day, 51,000. But only 6,000 bothered to show up. You know, 42% of the team has already been sold to a group from Tampa. But a Minnesota paper reports today that baseball commissioner Bowie Kuhn has told the group the sale will not be approved. That baseball wants local ownership for the Twins. Elsewhere in sports, the Soviets have apparently said they will not try to widen the Olympic boycott. That countries such as Cuba and Romania will be free to choose for themselves. The Preakness today, 10 horses are entered. They're expecting a fast track at Pimlico. Swale is the favorite. Boxing news, Hector Macho Camacho moves up to the lightweight division tomorrow here on NBC Sports. Dr. Ferdy Pacheco has a report for us from Corpus Christi, Texas. Macho, tomorrow on NBC Sports World, you face a tough enough opponent in Raphael Williams. Now, the word is you've been in training camp taunting him, you're driving him crazy, he can't wait to get at you. Now, why would you do that? Well, he first started trying to intimidate me. He was trying to do the macho on macho. So I told him, <laughs> even if you dream of beating me when you wake up, you better apologize. He's going crazy. <laughs> well, Sugar Ray, hopefully, Sugar Ray Leonard is out of boxing for good. That leaves a void in boxing as far as charismatic characters. Now, wait up. It's the macho right now. I'm the macho, and I miss the excitement in the game now. So don't blink your eyes, because I'm the macho man of boxing. Well, I, for one, believe you. And now, back to New York. Ah! Ooh, that's a million-dollar cut. <laughs> Glad you liked it. <laughs> there were some strange bounces this week around baseball. Sometimes the play starts off routine, but it doesn't end up routinely. Here are some examples now. Here is your routine ground ball off the pitcher's foot right to the third baseman who throws out the runner. Here's your routine hit batsman where it's the umpire who gets hurt on the ricochet. And here's your routine line drive with base hit written all over it. But bingo, second base, second baseman for the out. Your routine four to three put out to cost Mike Heath a hit. And when we continue on our pregame report, we will remember Charlie Lau and the influence that he had on his friends and his players. We'll be right back. How old should your child be before you buy a computer? High school, when he's planning a career? Elementary school, when she can either fall behind or leap ahead? Or preschool, to give him a head start? When you buy is up to you. But Commodore makes the decision easier than any other computer. Because it's a 64, it's very powerful. Because it's Commodore, it's very affordable. Here's to good friends. Terrific reunion. Yeah. The last time we were here, we made history. Tonight is kind of special. I stole that ball. I made the pass. I made the shot. Make that shot again. Who buy you a low and rock? The beer will pour. Hey, what can I tell you? We still got it. Never lost it. Let it be low and brown. Charlie Lau died two months ago at the age of 50. Today, we would like to pay tribute to the man some people have called the top hitting coach the game has ever seen. There's a reason why we picked this week to pay tribute. Kansas City played Chicago. It was your normal three-game series, with Chicago winning two out of the three. 
Wherever you looked around Comiskey Park this week, you couldn't help but think of Charlie Lau. After all, he helped Kansas City in the 1970s and Chicago in the 1980s, and he certainly left his mark. There's Ron Kittle showing patience. That's Charlie Lau. There's George Brett, perfect weight shift. That's Charlie Lau. There's Carlton Fisk, head down. That's Charlie Lau. I think hitting is a, a, a gray, gray area. Not too many people understand it or can speak intelligently about it. And they like to hear about how do we hit a baseball? It's a hard thing to do. And if somebody comes along that, that finds a way that, that does work, they'll listen. As a player, he was a journeyman catcher, played 11 years with five teams. He never batted 300. When he stopped playing, he started, started analyzing hitting, taking films, breaking down films and looking. And, and it was mentioned early on, you know, that he was going to be a good hitting instructor because he was willing to spend the time with, at that time, the younger players. He turned working with people into an art form. He even played himself in a movie. His books comprise the Bible of hitting. His players are his disciples. He has meant more to me in my career than he'll ever know or ever did know. And uh, for that, I'm grateful. But right now, I'm struggling again, and I desperately need somebody to talk to. Whenever you had problems, felt like you were struggling at the plate, he, there was always that open ear that Charlie had, and you were able to go into a, the office, uh, look over videotapes, and just get down and discuss what uh, hitting was all about on a real personal level. You know, usually in baseball, if you're doing well, you got friends. If you're not doing too well, you don't have any, you know. So it's kind of a, a bandwagon type situation in baseball. And I knew regardless of the situation, he was always in my corner. His star pupil, George Brett. He says Charlie Lau kept him in the majors. I didn't really know how to hit. Uh, I didn't know what your hands were supposed to do, and I'd never heard of weight shift before, and, and I really didn't. The only thing I knew about hitting was the guy was going to throw a white ball, and you hit it, and then you run towards first base. And if you think you can make it towards second, you keep going. Every once in a while, he'd get in the cage, and when we were doing something wrong, he would make me stand outside the cage and have someone throw in batting practice. And he'd get up there, and sure enough, he'd hit three or four line drives in a row and says, now copy that, you big dummy. And he kind of put me under his wing and took good care of me. And. Uh, helped me through some tough times. My memories of Charlie are so strong that I, I really feel, even like right now, I felt like I was in the clubhouse and he was sitting there and I was talking to him about, well, uh, fist hitting second, that's, that's still good, and Bull's struggling a little bit. How do we, you know, I really feel like uh, uh, I can remember everything about Charlie and I can sincerely say that in a day past that I haven't thought about him. The fitting tribute would be for me to be at Cooperstown and seeing Charlie Law enshrined into baseball's Hall of Fame as the first coach to make the Hall of Fame. How many people have an impact on life after they're gone? Think about that the next time you see George Brett keeping his head still. Or Vance Law extending his arms. Or Willie Wilson using the entire field. The legacy of Charlie Lau lives on. And it lives on in his books as well. Here's a copy of his new book that comes out next month called The Winning Hitter. And symbolic of his humility, there's no picture of Charlie Lau anywhere in the book, just pictures of the players he helped. And that'll do it for our pregame report. I hope you enjoy the game, everybody. I'll have the scores and highlights for you throughout the afternoon. We'll see you later. Before politics. What about the Americans? Don't they worry? Before professionalism. They're scarcely more than novices. There really was an Olympics where the only prize was glory. Share the thrilling adventure of the 13 Americans who took on the world. You'll stand up and cheer as the first Olympics begins tomorrow. For seven days, the good old guys want to sell an Oldsmobile every single minute. Come to our Car Minute Super Sale and get a special low price on America's top-selling Cutlass Supreme and Cutlass Sierra. Save on every Delta 88, new front-wheel drive 98, Olds Forenza, and Toronado. A Car Minute for seven days. That's more than 10,000 Oldsmobiles. So choose your Oldsmobile, pick your minute, and get the deal you've been waiting for. From your good old, good old guys. I've driven in the snow, and I've driven in the mud. Let me tell you, neither's fun, bud. 
Drive on Bridgestone. Drive on. Eats up snow and tracks like an arrow. Drinks up the water and spits out the miles. And that's miles of smiles. Drive on Bridgestone. Drive on. Being safe and feeling right, you got your world locked up tight, right? Right. Drive on Bridgestone. Drive on. High tech tread design for all kinds of weather. The name is Bridgestone. Drive on Bridgestone. Drive on. Linda Gray and Louis L'Amour, Monday, live at 5. Welcome to the house that Ruth built, Yankee Stadium, christened by the Bambino with a home run in April of 1923. And it is to Yankee Stadium that marks the return of Mr. October, Reggie Jackson, who hit as many as 41 home runs as a member of the Yankees, but now it comes back as a member of the California Angels and can still hit him out of sight, case in proof Detroit last week. Reggie Jackson, with 485 career home runs, returns to the home of the man who hit 714 as the Yankees meet the Angels at Yankee Stadium. NBC Sports presents Major League Baseball Game of the Week. Today from Yankee Stadium, it's the California Angels versus the New York Yankees. The Game of the Week is brought to you by Light Beer from Miller, an official beer sponsor of Major League Baseball. By IBM and the growing family of IBM personal computers. By Armor All, it's science, but it works like magic. And by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Welcome to New York. Temperature about 70 degrees, partially cloudy, a threat of rain earlier this morning, but apparently it has moved out of the city. Hi, everybody. I'm Vin Scully, along with Joe Garagiola, and in essence, East meets West. Negro against Zahn, and it's going to prove you need not have overpowering stuff to be a good pitcher. Zahn will spot that ball, and Negro with the knuckler. It's interesting, too, that Jeb Zahn is 25% of his 100 big league victories in the month of April. Negro, a notorious slow starter, was something like 1 and 14 in the National League, and he was 4 and 0 in April. It suddenly means one old war horse has maintained his consistency, the other one is totally different. And I never could understand why Negro would get off to a bad start because a knuckle ball is really an equal opportunity hard to hit hard to catch pitch nobody really has any easy time with it and with a knuckleballer uh, would that mean California would do a lot of running it's not that much of a running club except that Negro gets the ball up to the plate and in good time 1.2 is what they've measured him and that gives the catcher a lot of time so uh, of course it's a luxury with a man on third I used to hate to see that I couldn't handle a knuckleball well we'll find out about Butch Weiniger whether or he can handle either. a knuckleball or a curveball or a fastball <laughs> and we'll have the starting lineup three games that's coming up right after this. Loss of control here could ruin your whole day. Test final Chuck Yeager for AC Delco. Even on the highway, I stay on top of my car with the new Delco Performer Shock Absorber. Its seal gas cell eliminates air bubbles and provides a constant cushion in lab tests and on the highway. It's the only shock your car will ever need. Never wait for trouble. Get the Delco Performer. Call 800 AC Delco for a retailer near you. <laughs> this camping trip was a good idea. Yeah, it sure is relaxing. Peaceful. Groovy. Ooh, kind of dark, though. Man, I'm getting thirsty. Yeah, let's have another light beer from Miller. Light scratch Philly! Light scratch Philly! Light scratch Philly! Light scratch What was that? The creature. What creature? Well, legend has it that a horrible thing stalk these woods. Oh, Richie! And it comes out when the moon is full. Oh. 
What does this creature look like? It walks on two legs, but it isn't human. It's got big eyes that bulge out and... Oh! It's the creature! Guys, where you going? Hey, guys, where are the marshmallows? Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Come on, it's after us! Man, did you see that thing? Shot in the Hi, I'm Nolan Ryan. I always get a thrill from seeing baseball's great players in the All-Star game. That's why I urge you to help choose the starting lineups for the 1984 All-Star game in San Francisco on July the 10th. This will be the 15th year that you can vote for your favorites in baseball's All-Star election. Ballots are free at retail stores featuring a Gillette All-Star display and at major and minor league ballparks. All-Star balloting ends June 30th, so get out and vote. The preceding announcement was furnished by Major League Baseball and Gillette. George Steinbrenner's weekend guest, the Dunedin High School Falconeers from Dunedin, Florida, singing our national anthem. And as they file proudly off, George is going to show them a nice time in the Big Apple for the weekend. And they did themselves proud indeed with our national anthem. Overcast skies at Yankee Stadium, but one job already well done, and now it remains for the players to put on the show, and a show they should. The Angels and the Yankees. They had their extra inning game last night, a game that Tommy John thought he had won, a game that was tied by the Yankees, and the Angels finally won it in the 10th inning on a home run by Doug DeCense after some ninth inning heroics by catcher Butch Weiniger. For those folks who would normally be looking at the Chicago Cup ball game slowed up because of weather, welcome to Yankee Stadium, and let's go to Joe Garagiola and veteran coach Jimmy Reese. Standing next to me is Jimmy Reese, who's a coach with the California Angels, but a roommate of Babe Ruth, and Jimmy coming back to Yankee Stadium has to bring back a lot of memories. Well, I should say it does, Joe. I can go back 54 years when I was here in 1930, and I'd still remember it very vividly. Did you used to come to the ballpark with the babe? Oh, yes, quite a bit. We come early, and, and also Lou Gehrig used to come out early for hitting practice. If he went 0 for 4 one day, he'd want to find out what's wrong with him. Let's talk about your lineup. Gary Pettis leads it off in center field. What kind of a player is he? One of the best defensive outfielders I've ever seen in my entire career. Wow. Fred Lynn bats second. Uh, Reggie Jackson bats third, the designated hitter. Can you compare Reggie Jackson with Babe Root in any way? I should say so. He's very comparable to the Babe. Had a great deal of charisma, still has. And there's an aura of, of excitement the minute he walks on the field. Just like the Babe, huh? Exactly. DeCense, third base. Downing in left field. Will Fong's at second base. Gritch at first base. Naren is the catcher. And Schofield is shortstop. How good a player? He's a fine defensive player right now, and he's going to get better as he goes along. Jimmy, thank you very much. It's a pleasure, Joe. Jimmy Reese. Well, right now, the pitcher, Phil Necro, 46 years young, with a brilliant earned run average of one and a record of six and one, his only defeat at the hands of Milwaukee when he lost one to nothing. That's how tough he has been. Talking to him about his starts, I said, why a good start this year when you should have good starts all the time with a knuckleball? He said he, the knuckleball came to him sooner this spring because the Yankees were trying to find a catcher who could catch him. So they were auditioning Cerrone and Weiniger, and they forced Necro to throw his knuckleball sooner in spring training. And that meant when the season started, he had his knuckleball earlier, and then he's off to the good start. Off to a great start, 4-0 and in April, 6-1 and for the year, and working now on Gary Pettis and the knuckler high, ball one. We should also say, to quote Jimmy Reese, remember what he said? As fine an outfielder as he has ever seen. What a compliment, huh? Right, one and one. In fact, Gary Pettis, good enough, as you see Jimmy Reese sitting next to Rod Carew in the Padre dugout. He's so good, he pushed Freddie Lynn over to right field. The Yankees with Omar Marino in center field. 
ground ball just fair smothered on down the line and by the time Winfield picks it up they've got Pettis hung up and the flip back and tag at first Gary Pettis I believe thought it was a ground rule double a fan reached over and he thought that someone had touched it but first base umpire said no way he had motioned safe all the way the fan did not get his hand on the ball he gets into the corner pass Mattingly watch the umpire he motions safe you can see the fan reaching over and Winfield just gets it into the infield and it's an easy out uh, it, it's a mistake that a rookie will make and the manager will talk to him tomorrow and he simply will say to him don't umpire don't ever umpire. If it's a ground rule double, they will tell you just run the play out. So with Mattingly making the eventual put out on Gary Pettis, who confusedly thought it was a ground rule double, we are well underway. And with one out, here is Freddie Lynn with a six game hitting streak. The dancer, as Jim Gilliam once called the knuckleball thrown by Hoyt Wilhelm, and I guess I've never heard it put better. <laughs> Two and oh the count. Ben, the pregame show, uh, paid tribute to Charlie Lau, who, by the way, in addition to his hitting instructions, he said there's two theories about catching a knuckleball, but unfortunately none of them work. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> High foul, twisting off third and out of play. The Yankees defensively on the infield Mattingly Randolph Robertson and Hara Pinella Moreno and Winfield in the outfield and Butch Weiniger behind the plate. You'll see a lot of knuckleballs but especially with two strikes he throws the one and says here it comes I don't know where it's going. There it is. And we know where it's going around the infield. So Freddie Lynn is badly fooled on the knuckleball one away. Interestingly enough, in comparing the two pitchers today, neither man was an instantaneous success. But before we talk about the pitchers, all eyes on the arrival of Reggie Jackson, who celebrated his 38th birthday last night and struck out three times. If you call that celebrating, all one. So 46 year old Phil Necro, 38 year old Reggie Jackson. Reggie talks about how well he hits the knuckleball and you can't argue with him because he hit one of Charlie Huff's into the center field seats. Charlie's got a good one. The ability to hit the knuckleball means you really have to wait on the ball. Otherwise you're in trouble if you commit yourself early. As good a hitter I guess as I saw in past years was Duke Snyder who's in the Hall of Fame now. He could wait on that knuckleball about as good as anyone. Same way catching it. You can't go out and meet it. You have to. Walker Cooper always says you fondle it. Two and one. All three. Three and one. Greg Kosk behind the plate. Ted Hendry. Then you have Drew Coble and Jim Evans. The Yankees and the Angels. Game two of their series. And Reggie takes those double fours and trots them down to first. You might note the glove that Weiniger is using to catch it. It's, uh, it's the big one, but not as big as most of them. It's almost like two pieces of leather, and the, the theory is it's like a tweezer. You, you just want to have it hit the glove, and it'll close automatically as soon as it hits the glove. You can see it. First time I ever saw a glove that big was when Paul Richards was connected with Atlanta, and they had Hoyt Wilhelm, and all of a sudden we called it, for want of a description, a waffle glove. So he's got a big waffle there, and here's Doug DeSensei, who had that home run last night to win for the Angels ball one for Doug five of those seven home runs have come on the road strike one and one to count to sensei just the start of the ball game we were talking about Reggie Jackson's 44 you see Phil Necro's 35 that uniform number will be retired by Atlanta Ted Turner is going to erect a statue outside of Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium in Necro's honor. The same Ted Turner who let Necro go because he won just one game in his last eight starts last year. They tell me the statue is going to cost about 150,000 and it'll be in good company. It'll be near Henry Aaron's statue. It'll be August the 6th. And the Yankees are due to be off that day. So that's how they can tie in the salute to Necro. There goes Jackson. And it's fouled away. 
didn't get a chance, but in talking to John McNamara, what he said, Ben, was with two strikes, he knows Nicaro is going to give it that extra knuckleball, which makes it doubly tough for the catcher, and he'll be running most of the time with two strikes. And of course, McNamara now wants the umpires to make Nicaro stop because that's one of the reasons that he gets that ball up there in 1.2. He really comes to a quick stop. Look at there. You know, in talking about Rene Latchman, who was the one who first timed Necro 1.2, Jeff Zahn claims that he has been timed in 1.1 and 1.2. So you have two fellows who really get rid with the runner going and it's fouled away. It really helps a catcher to get that ball in a hurry, and you can see that Necro, in addition to coming to a quick stop, if a stop at all, is also stopping different places. One time at the letters, one time at the belt. You know, he's been around the block. He just didn't fall off the truck. <laughs> no, and there have been ten attempts at stolen bases on Necro, and Weiniger has thrown out seven of the ten. A reminder, if and when the elements relent, why naturally the Chicago ball game will be brought to those folks who are planning to view that game. And the knuckleball gets to Sensei. Necro strikes out two, and at the end of half an inning, no runs, one hit, a man left. The Angels nothing, and the Yankees coming up. How do you spell relief? R-O-L-A-I-D-S. We don't really eat when we should or what we should, so I usually take a Rolaid. For acid indigestion, R-O-L-A-I-D-S. For millions of Americans, Rolaid spells 100% relief. Wanted? What for? Shave off that beard. Not with good news. Not with Bic. The Schick disposable is sharper than good news and beats Bic for overall performance. Great. Now why am I wanted? To take me dancing, Joe Montana. The Schick disposable beats them both. Bottom of the first inning, the Angels turned away on a base hit and a walk, but two strikeouts hammered them. Here's the way the Yankees stack up, with Willie Randolph leading off at second base, and Toby Harrell will be at third. Dave Winfield will be in right field, with Don Baylor the DH. Lou Pinella will be in left field. Don Mattingly will be the first baseman. Butch Weiniger behind the plate. Andre Robertson returns to shortstop and making a rare start of late, but back in center field, Omar Moreno. And on the mound, Jeff Zahn, and here's where the Angels look. The defense for the Angels, they will have the sensei at the third base, Schofield, and what a young player he is. His father, former major leaguer Ducky Schofield, signed with the Cardinals in Pittsburgh and the Yankees. Wolfong is at second base. Uh, Gritch will be at first base. Naren is the catcher. The outfield, Downing, Pettis, and Lynn. And if you heard Jimmy Reese give the lineup, uh, in fact, there are some people talking gold glove for Pettis already. He's made some just unbelievable catches. Zahn is on the mound. A dart thrower moves the ball around. it take you a while to break in the glove catching him, but he wins games. Jeff Zahn might throw 60% changeups. He is that kind of a pitcher. And he is a story of age overpowering what should be good reason and sense. Zahn, for instance, when he was 30 years old, had a grand total of six victories in the big leagues. At 30, here he is. He's 37 years old, and his record is 100 wins, 100 losses. So he has really fought the tough battle at the advanced age, as far as baseball is concerned, or professional sports of 37. He'll be pitching to Willie Randolph, who has an eight-game hitting streak, followed by Toby Hara and then Dave Winfield. Zahn's slider, and that was his first pitch. He'll throw that a lot. He has a pretty good sinking fastball. He'll throw a curveball occasionally to a left-handed batter, and that's about it. There's a change. You usually see a lot of good plays with a pitcher like Zahn because you know he's around the plate, hitters are hitting it, and 
infielders and outfielders are ready to make the play. Two and one, the count to Willie Randolph. Randolph, the spearhead of a Yankee attack. The Yankees are not a running team. In fact, they've amassed a grand total of only 13 stolen bases this year. Fouled away. And the Angels point to the home run. The Angels lead the league in home runs with 39. And it's interesting to break the Angels down in games where they hit home run. They're 17 and 8. In a game where the Angels fail to hit a home run, they've only won four and lost 11. Ground ball along third, foul ball. Doug DeSensei there. Of course, the Angels are a lot stronger as long as Doug's back holds up. Last year at one stage, the Angels had 15 players on the disabled list. And there are quite a few fallen Angels from 1984. Don Ozzie, Ken Forge, Bruce Keeson, Rick Burleson, Darrell Sconiers, Ellis Valentine. The Yankees have their own disabled list. And that's whacked into right field. Base hit. Fred Lynn over to field it. So Randolph is hitting nine straight as he singles to right to open up the bottom of the first. And the batter now will be Toby Harrop. That's the way you have to hit, Zahn. Go to the opposite field. Uh, what he wants you to do is what Randolph did on the pitch before that when he tried to pull the off-speed pitch and hit the ground ball. It happened to be fouled towards the sensei. You go to the opposite field, you're waiting longer, and you have more success. you got to hit and run combine up there now with Harrow who can handle a bat and Randolph on. Randolph has two stolen bases and has been caught three times but what's really interesting no one has stolen a base on Zahn yet as we said he comes to the plate as quickly as Necro he does not have a lot of flourish or a big high kick he gets that ball to his catcher and there they go on a pitch out and they've got him hung up the throw to first they've got him well you try to get a jump and he'll burn you every time so Randolph hung out to dry. He started to go on that first pitch. You knew you had a hit and run combine, and he did get back, but this time he broke, and you could see it was a hit and run play because he's watching to see if the bat could get on the ball, but it was too late because uh, Booney had pitched out on him, or Naren, rather. Interesting note, and that is that no one has stolen a base yet on Zahn this year. Off speed pitch away, 2 0. Oh. Guy like him is a delight to catch. Uh, he gets the ball to you in a hurry and he also gives you the luxury of calling a pitch out. You don't put him in a jackpot when you call a pitch out and nothing happens. Two balls and no strikes. Line drive, base hit into left field. So that pickoff turns out to be very big as Hara follows with a single to left and it'll bring up Dave Winfield. We're talking about the Angel DL. We should mention the Yankee DL. Mike Armstrong along with May, Cerrone, Montefusco, and Murray. Montefusco is fortunate to be alive. He was in an automobile accident, rear-ended, severe whiplash. So him in the clubhouse had that big brace on his neck. There's Dave Winfield. He's a hot hitter now. He's had seven hits in his last 15 at bats. That lifts his average to 276. Off speed for a strike. Go on one. Then you would think that they would be playing Winfield to pull against Zahn, but Pettis, the center fielder, is right in line with the base. You could draw a line from the catcher and you'd cut second base in half. See him right there, right? Look at the he's got room in right center and left center, which is a tribute to Winfield. And there's a fastball. You, you could wait around all day for that pitch. And finally, Zahn decided to sneak it in there. And he got it. I think he caught him between hitches. Winfield was fooling with that bat and Zahn just zipped one right by him. Dave muttering to himself, how in the world could I take that one? And standing at first, Toby Harris held on by Bobby Gritch. 0 oh and 2. Ground foul. He jammed him. So Winfield fouling that one down off his left foot. And time out as he hobbles a bit. Dave Winfield, who came off the campus of the University of Minnesota and was such a great athlete that he was drafted in three sports, he and Atlanta's Bob Horner are the only two ball players without any minor league experience. How long were you in the minors, Joe, before you came up? I was there three years. Well, that's pretty quick. In those days. In those days. Oh, and two. Ball one. 
love to watch these pitchers who really spot the ball. Now he's one and two, and I'd be willing to bet that it's going to still be his pitch to hit. Zano control his pitch right here and try to make the pitcher decision two and two. Real cat and mouse here when you got a big slugger up here. And that's lined to center, but it's hanging for Pettis. In fact, it started to take off, and Gary had to reach up to get it. So all three balls well hit. Randolph single to right, but was picked off on that busted hit and run play. Harris singles to left, and Winfield lines out. And the batter now is Don Baylor. Well, if there's one place you want Winfield to hit, and Baylor for that matter, is straightaway center field or left center field, where it's 430 in left center and 417 in dead center. Strike to Baylor. Baylor hitting 248. He has four home runs, 10 RBIs. Baylor wanted to be an everyday player last year, and for quite some time he was not. He drives it to right and pretty deep. Back goes Lynn to the track at the wall. He's got it. So Baylor, who led the Yankees last year in homers, RBIs, and average, goes to right. Tomorrow, a preview about Macho Man on NBC. Here's a look. Sports World makes big news. Undefeated Hector Macho Camacho battles Rafael Williams. Is the Macho Man with the devastating hands ready for this Latin American champion? A showdown inside the ring that will make headlines. NBC Sports is big news in May. In this rapidly changing world, even the brightest and best manager in the company may need more than a loyal staff to run a smooth operation. For when headquarters calls and pressure builds, it becomes harder to keep things rolling without running into mix-ups, losing control of the operation, falling behind. For rapid improvement, a manager could use a tool for modern times. The IBM personal computer. For smoother scheduling, better planning, and greater productivity. It can help a manager excel and become a big wheel in the company. The IBM personal computer. See it at a store near you. Now, discover the quick response and smooth performance of new Exxon Extra, our highest octane unleaded gasoline ever. Its extra boost of octane quiets the knocks, silences the pings for extra smooth performance. New Exxon Extra, quality you can count on. There you see the way the Yankees stack up behind Phil Necro. And by the way, Necro has won five gold gloves. So you have an extra defender right there in the middle of the diamond. It'll be Brian Downing, Rob Wilfong, and Bobby Gritch coming up for the Angels here in the second inning. No score. But we've had a lot going on. Three hits in the game up here. No runs, one hit for the Angels, two strikeouts and a walk. And there were two hits and a line drive out and a pickoff in the first inning against the Yankees. So Brian Downing with the count 0 and 1 as we start the second inning. Downing hitting 239. Boy, he doesn't get cheated up there. He swings from the heel. Watch this one though. Two strikes and no balls. He'll sky right this one. One and two. You know when you bat it against a knuckleballer, he said if he throws you anything besides a knuckleball, even if it's out of the strike zone, go for it. You were swinging at everything. Two and two. What was the advice they gave Frank Howard when the big guy first came to the Dodgers? They said, swing as hard as you can in case you hit something. <laughs> two and two, the count to Brian Downing. Line to right field coming up as Winfield, but he'll play it on a hop, so we're busy. That's hit number two plus a walk for the Angels. Nothing to show for it yet. And the batter will be Rob Wilfong. I asked Weinecker about the two strike knuckleball pitch and here's what he had to say. Number nine. That was one of the first things Phil told me in spring. He told me when he gets two strikes or, or one and two on a hitter, 
What he's going to do is we're going to go with the knuckleball 90% of the time, and he's going to rear back, and he's going to throw it as hard as he really can. Uh, normally he throws three quarters, but with two strikes, he'll come right over the top with it, and that's the one he said he has no idea in the world where it's gone, and, and, and I have no idea, so I have to be on my toes at all times. <laughs> Well, they really have to be on their toes with Will Fong because, among other things, he is a great bunter. I think somebody sat down and figured it out that he has 71 bunt hits, and he added two more this year, so he has 73. He's led the American League in sacrifices, so we'll see if they have something going on here. They got something going on, and Necro throwing to first base is not just throwing over there for a commercial to let him know that he knows they're there. He's trying to pick them off. As far as stolen bases are concerned, Downing is 0 for 1. Meanwhile, Hara is in on the grass at third, but Mattingly can't commit since he's holding the corner on Downing. Even with Necro, you have the luxury of a pitch out, and right now I'd pitch out. One and one. Off the rubber. Well, that tells me he does no pitch out on, though. Because with the pitch out on, you want him to throw the ball and you want the guy to run. Two and one to count. I'd have had him two balls and one strike the same way, but I'd have looked smart calling for a pitch I out, wouldn't I? Say. Same yeah. town. That's an interesting point, though. As soon as he backed off the rubber, you knew the pitch out was off. Was not. Was yeah. off. Here's the manager's delight, two and one. Now. What a move! See how quick he does that. Young pitchers, you can study this guy. Seven out of ten caught stealing against him. No one has a stolen base against Zahn. There's ball three. Of course, Necro, like any knuckleball pitcher, if he gets behind a lot, he bows to the temptation of trying to sneak a fastball in, and he used to get burned over in the National League when he did that. He'd get burned over here, too. Especially against a team with a runner going, there's ball four. So they play run and hit. Remember, this is the, the number one home run hitting team in the American League. The Angels have 39. So Necro has allowed two hits, two walks. He's also struck out two, so he's balanced his books. And here's Bobby Gritch. I think if I read the infielders right, Randolph was pointing to Necro that if a ball is hit back to him, Robertson will be covering, which is kind of unusual with a right-hand batter up there. It usually switch off right-hand batter and shortstop holds his position most of the time. Gritch has been slumping as he takes that knuckleball for a strike, 0 and 1. In fact, he's only had three hits in his last 18 trips. So you wonder about whether he would sacrifice. But if they have him sacrificed, then you get down to Naren and Schofield spot. Oh and two. Weiniger has not dropped the ball yet. And I marvel at that. Because you wake up in the middle of the night seeing knuckleballs. You answer the phone, you see a knuckleball. Whatever you do, knuckleball. Now I hate that pitch. You know, there's one thing, uh, Necro doesn't like it either. It's so difficult. Would you believe in all of baseball history, Phil Necro is number one. He has thrown the most wild pitches. 201 trips to the backstop made by catchers in his career, but only one this year so far. So far. Knuckleball is lifted to right field. Winfield has to go back, and the runners are going to tag. Downing at second is on his way, and Winfield's throw will be cut off at shortstop by Robertson. So Gritch, a fly ball to right field to put runners at first and third with one out and Jerry Naren coming up. Is there a theory at all about going the other way with a knuckleball like you would with a sinker? Both as a hitter and as a catcher. It's the only way. You go the other way. He throws it and you're heading back to the backstop. That's why I marvel at Rick Farrell, man. Can you imagine catching Dutch Leonard, Johnny Nigley, Mickey Hefner? Who was the fourth one? Uh, Roger Wolf. Roger Wolf. Imagine that every day you had to wake up and catch a knuckleballer. Poor Rick had to talk to himself. Well, we'll see now about Necro talking to Jerry Naren, who was traded to Seattle and joined the Angels as a free agent before the start of the 82 season. Played for the Yankees in 79. So Jerry at the plate with first and third, one out, no score in the second. Ball one. One and oh. Here's where a pitcher. A knuckleball pitcher has to have complete confidence in his catcher. He'll not throw it with the same confidence unless he knows the guy behind the plate is going to catch it. 
Ground ball sharply to short, and on the bag is Robertson. Doubles him at first, and Necro's out of the jam. The double play 6-3. Robertson getting the put out and the assist. A base hit, a walk, and a man left. And at the end of an inning and a half, no score. The final basket. Match point. The last lap. Right now, your body's thirsty for more than water. It needs thirst aid. Gatorade. Gatorade is thirst aid for a deep down body thirst. When you exercise, you lose more than water. You lose potassium, minerals, fluids. Gatorade puts it all back fast. It's no ordinary thirst quencher. It's thirst aid. Gatorade is thirst aid for a deep down body thirst. Gene Shallot. Is that a Ford Tempo you're driving? You bet it is. Why Tempo? Well, I screened it. And your review? Tempo, a moving vehicle produced by Ford. I was carried away by its easy handling. Easy handling? And front-wheel drive for good traction, whatever the weather. Very good. And those lines, so dramatically modern, so smartly cast. You know that Tempo's now outselling all the imports in America? Of course, Tempo has star quality. OK, Gene, you can take your mustache off now. <laughs> Have you driven the best-built American cars? Have you driven a Ford lately? Denerex Shampoo and Conditioner versus Head and Shoulders, regular formula. This side, I feel a tingling sensation, which is very good. And this side, I don't feel that sensation at all. Look what you used. <laughs> well, I'm surprised. Denerex is the one that tingled, and Head and Shoulders didn't. Each shampoo has one medicine for dandruff. Denerex adds an extra anti-itch medicine, and Denerex adds conditioner, too. My hair is in great shape. The girls might like that. I'm switching from Head and Shoulders to Denerex. Denerex, dandruff shampoo that conditions, too. Sports World makes big news. Hector Macho Camacho battles Rafael Williams. And the good old boys are at it again, riding into racing history at over 200 miles per hour. Come on down to the Alabama Talladega 500. NBC Sports makes big news in May. A reminder tomorrow, NBC Sports World, the WBC Junior Lightweight Championship. And it'll be Hector Camacho. And he'll be going up against Rafael Williams. We'll also have the exciting NASCAR action, the Alabama Talladega 500, tomorrow right here on NBC Sports World. Got a great name for a fighter, Macho Camacho. Macho Camacho. <laughs> Lou Pinello will start it off, followed by Don Mattingly and then Butch Weiniger. With a home run last night off Tommy John, he's hit in six of his last seven games. So the only active batting instructor in the game, Lou Pinello. Strike. Pinello hitting 295. That was his first home run of the year last night. Five RBIs. Ground ball to the right side. Rob Wilfong is there. Over to Bobby Gritch. One away. We are still at the hands of the elements in Chicago. So the Chicago Houston game held up with Rick Russell and Bob Nepper to be the pitchers. If and when the weather relents. Why we will send you that ball game if you are in that particular viewing area scheduled to receive it. Meanwhile it's the Yankees. And the Angels at Yankee Stadium, and here's Don Mattingly. Boy, are they high on this fella here in New York. Well, they should be. He knows what to do with the bat. I like left-handed hitters like this, and when they get a curveball, they follow it all the way in. That just almost shows the pitcher, hey, is that your best curveball? Throw me another one. There's a note about Mattingly that somewhat shockingly reflects what's going on in New York. There's a bouncer to the right side, and Will Fong will get him. Here's the note. Mattingly homered May the 7th. That ended a Yankee streak of going 103 innings without a home run. Now, you think of the Yankees, the name synonymous with a home run. Back in 1975, Bill Verdon's last 13 games as a manager, the Yankees failed to hit a home run. He was replaced by Billy Martin, and in Martin's first game as a manager, Roy White, the coach, hit a home run to break the drought. And that was how lucky Billy was. The Bronx Bombers are suddenly not. And here is Butch Weiniger. Amazing how the complexion of a ball club will change so drastically as this club. I mean, when they said bombers, 
another background note as we hit a big hopper to Desense and Doug will throw him out. You realize the Yankees win 308 games without being shut out back in the 30s? How? We'll be back after these messages from your local station. Fish are getting cancer in more of our rivers and lakes. Scientists are close to the cause, but what does it all mean for people? Go where the news is. NBC Nightly News with Connie Chung, Saturday. Hey, guys, I'm back. Catch anything, Riley? Yeah, I caught this granddaddy of a fish. But when I got him in the boat, he says, I'll give you three wishes if you throw me back. A talking fish? Well, it was hot. I was thirsty, so I wished for a nice, cold Stroh's beer. And there it was. Mmm. Tasted so good, I wished for another one. Two wishes, two Stroh's. And what'd you do with the third wish? Hey, would I forget my friends? <laughs> From one beer lover to another, Stroh's. Introducing the ITT Extra Personal Computer to help America work smarter with cash flow and color and spreadsheets and profits. From Wall Street to Main Street, the new ITT Extra is one of the best personal computers next to the human mind. So people like Julie and you can simply work smarter. Work smart, America, with the new ITT Extra Personal Computer. For seven days, the good old guys want to sell an Oldsmobile every single minute. Come to our Car Minute Super Sale and get a special low price on America's top-selling Cutlass Supreme and Cutlass Sierra. Save on every Delta 88, new front-wheel drive 98, Olds Forenza, and Toronado. The Car Minute for seven days. That's more than 10,000 Oldsmobiles. So choose your Oldsmobile, pick your minute, and get the deal you've been waiting for. From your good old, good old guy. Lords of the Ring Inside Pro Wrestling starts Tuesday at 6. We have two innings in the books here at Yankee Stadium. The Angels, no runs, two hits, no errors. The Yankees, no runs, two hits, no errors. Bill Necro with a record of 6 and 1 going against Jeff Zahn, who is 4 and 3. Necro at 46, Zahn at 37. Needless to say, two veterans. Schofield followed by Pettis and then Lynn will test him in the third inning. <laughs> Willie Randolph takes care of Dick Schofield's first swing on the first pitch and just like that one down and the batter will be Gary Pettis. This is an interesting day. This May the 19th. May the 19th 1964. 20 years ago today. This man was sent down to the minors. Hmm. He had come up in April with the Braves and he couldn't cut it. But 20 years ago, he was sent back, a reject. And now look at it. Line to left field. Coming up for it is Pinella. Goes to his knees, can't hold on to it. Pettis will make a turn and hold on. Then the throw gets loose and Mattingly finally runs it down. Boy, Joe, I'll tell you one thing, you had better not blink here. Everybody's first ball swinging. It's almost like we got the wrong speed on those records going. Pinella thought he might have a chance for it, just fell about a half inch short. And uh, the second spot in this Angels lineup, very important because Pettis with great speed. I know Rod Carew, when he was batting second, said that he had to try to anticipate when Pettis would be running, and he was taking a lot more pitches. Lynn now batting second, one man out, but Pettis a definite threat to run. Is he ever? He's 14 out of 18. In fact, he has stolen 14 of the 23 Angel steals. So if anybody's going to go, it's the kid center fielder now, and Necro will get some pressure. Off speed, squirted back to Necro. He goes to Robertson, and he goes to Mattingly. See you later. I mean, are both teams double park? <laughs> At the end of two and a half innings, without the slightest waste of time, Angels nothing, Yankees nothing. Quaker State, America's favorite motor oil, announces a million dollar giveaway. Look for this ad in your Sunday paper. Scratch here, and if what you see matches the poster at your participating Quaker State dealer, congratulations, you're a millionaire. In any case, you win with a rebate. Up to $2.40 on 12 cans or bottles. Quaker State's million-dollar giveaway. Only an oil this good makes an offer 
this good. You know, one of the best things about being an ex-big leaguer is getting freebies to the game. Call the front office, bingo. And once these fans recognize me, I probably won't even have to pay for my life here for Miller. Down it! <laughs> I love them. These fans know I drink light because it's less filling and it tastes great. Good seats, huh? You're in the wrong seat, buddy. Come on. Oh, I must be in the front come on, row. Come on, come on. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Good seats, hey, buddy? He missed the tag! He missed the tag! There we were in no man's land When the moving truck died in the sun and the sand So since it seemed we'd be a while We set up house and we waited in style And we waited And we waited And we waited Now I know Ryder and some newer They're tougher, they're strong And driving a bargain sure didn't pay So next time I'll think this way It's Ryder or it's wrong The American tradition continues with an old-fashioned doubleheader and baseball's best of the West. The Dodgers battle the Mets, then the world champion Orioles take on the Angels, or the Cardinals face the Braves and the Royals clash with the Red Sox. The teams are here. The memories are waiting. Next Saturday. Doubleheader action next week. The Dodgers and the Mets, the Cardinals, Atlanta Braves, Baltimore Orioles and the Angels, where we'll be. Kansas City Royals and the Boston Red Sox. You might have seen a young, impressive Marine lieutenant. There he is, having a time of his life with a pretty girl and a hot dog in a ball game. But more than that, that is young Michael McNamara, Lieutenant Michael McNamara of the United States Marine Corps, son of John McNamara, squirt at foul. He just received his bars recently at Quantico, Joe. Here is his proud father. And you know he got into the biggest jam did the young lieutenant in officers candidate school in this day and age of let's see quaaludes cocaine uh, LSD PCP marijuana he got into a very big jam that's a pop fly in the infield and it'll be Bobby Gritch well. OK almost played it the other way. He got into the jam because they found in his locker not LSD or PCP or cocaine or marijuana. He got into a jam because they found a bag of M&Ms in his locker. And I said, well, you know who played here for years? And he said, who? I said, two guys that they call M&M, Mandel and Maris. Great kid. We're proud to have the opportunity to salute him on the air and his father. Drag bunt, foul. He left it behind the plate. A lot of times when you're watching that, you're always saying that ball. He should have caught that ball. But as a catcher, as soon as that hitter shortens up to punt that ball, you're breaking towards the infield because you want to make a play on the fair ball. And when you break that way, it sure is hard to make a U-turn. I wonder if you were looking at a fastball pitcher the first time around, you might want to just look at him a little bit to, to gauge. But they're not doing that with knuckleballers. Or with off speed pitches like Zahn because they're throwing strikes. That's the key right there. They're throwing strikes. There's no sense taking anything you think you like. Go get it. Zahn, 23 pitches, 16 strikes. Little bouncer over the mound behind the bag. Flagged by Schofield, but no play. He showed some range, didn't he? Boy, and Ducky did a 360 behind the bag and then wisely held on. Because that's the kind of play where when you do a complete turn as he does you throw it away. Here's another look. Watch this. He comes a long way and he comes up with the ball and he realizes Moreno is running and he wouldn't have had a play but he sure showed a lot of range. He's about oh, a good 15 20 feet to the other side of the bag. Well we were talking before about the pressure that was on Phil Necro as to Gary Pettis stealing. Now the pressure is on Zahn with Moreno. Remember, Omar stole 96 bases for the Pirates in 1980. He's five out of six this year. So let's see if they have a play on with Willie Randolph. Strike. Randolph single to right in the first inning. He's hit in nine straight. One thing the Yankees got out of the habit of last year with Billy Martin, they rarely sacrificed. I mean, they just didn't bunt at all. Not looking here, of course, with one out, but the thought was the bunt went out the window last year. Billy would run the guys and play it run, just like Weaver put and make the bunt obsolete. He liked the three run inning. Yeah. A reminder once the field 
Wrigley Field in Chicago is ready for that ball game with Houston. Why that particular network will see that ball game as scheduled. Chicago Houston, Rick Russell and Rob Nepper. One and one to count here. No score. We're in the bottom of the third, the Angels and the Yankees. Last year, 11 runners tried to steal against Zahn, and nine of the 11 were caught. No one has been able to steal on him this year. Now, this is really an interesting thing. The Rangers doesn't have a very big lead. You're looking for him to run at all times. Marino is a little rusty. In fact, he had asked to be traded if he didn't get a chance to play more. And when Ken Griffey was hurt Tuesday night, he made his first start in three weeks. You could really see with that shot him concentrating on Michaels. If I were catching right now, I'd really look for him to run. He's making sure he just checked with the coach. There, and there he goes. goes. They got him picked off, and Gritch dropped the ball while in the act of throwing. Joe, you had him all set. The cameras did a great job that time, and if a catcher could have those cameras, he'd never uh, make a mistake. You could see Moreno checking with the first base coach to make sure that he had to sign. What a great piece of work, guys. And Bobby Gritch has him dead to rights. Except as Bobby went to transfer the ball to throw, he dropped it. And he will draw an error. Strike. So no stolen base. Error charge to Gritch. Boy, in this kind of a game, that could be a, a dynamite play. Randall trying to pick him up. No score, bottom of the third. Two and two. Ground ball pulled a third. DeSense juggles and he drops it. That ball probably took a bad hop because it looked like he was playing it sideways off his left hip. It was not a true hop. Watch him because he has great hands. Now he looks like right there. Hit him right on the heel of the glove. And that thing was just hot once it got to the glove. And you can see the disgust of DeSense. So another error. And here's another look at it. Watch it hit the heel of his glove. He kind of screamed it, but he just had a terrible time with it. It was not a true hop. Should have made the play, though, obviously. The Angels had four double plays last night with sinker baller Tommy John. Here's Toby Harris, ball one. Harris single to left in the first inning. So Zahn is in trouble when he shouldn't be at all. I might just add that Zahn has not shown any emotion at all. Sign of a good pitcher. He's not angry or upset at any of his infielders because he knows he'll make a good play for him just as well as he made the bad play here. One ball and no strikes. Two on, one out on the third, no score. Two and oh, the count to Toby Harris. Moreno, who was picked off first, reached second when Gritch dropped the ball while trying to throw. And then Randolph had a tricky hopper into Sensei, couldn't glove it for an error. And the Yankees are in business with one out. Hara and Winfield on deck. Now he's really in trouble. Three and oh. Zahn this year and for that matter for his career is neither a strikeout pitcher nor a walker his most walks in a game this year only three and he did that three times most strikeouts in the game only four in there fastball let me ask you with his kind of stuff and you just seen the fastball three and oh if you're McNamara you have your infield and double play depth and if you are Yogi, are you going to let Harry hit? Or are you going to have the runners go three and one? What would you do? No, I'd hold the runners and let him hit. Because I want Winfield up there. Three and one. Runners hold, and the chains missed. So the bases are loaded. Imagine a three-one change. He couldn't give him the fastball because you had to feel it. He was sitting on it, and uh, Zahn even got that one up. And Harry was going to make sure. It was a good pitch because you want the big guy up there now. Now the battle begins. Here it is, David and Goliath. So Dave Winfield with the bases loaded and one out. And Zahn would be less than human if he didn't think, why am I in all this trouble? 
I picked the guy off. I got him dead. I got a ground ball to a, a fine fielding third baseman. Now I walk a man and I'm up to my hips in trouble. Number three man in the American League in RBIs behind Cooper and Rice last year. Had a chance to clean up. Pops it in the air. Foul. And there is Jerry Naren to put it away. Now let me ask you this. And I know it drives the fans crazy. Jeff Zahn just walked the batter. Why would Winfield go up and swing at the first pitch? Because he was looking for a pitch and he got it and didn't hit it. He had to be looking for that pitch because it was an off-speed pitch. He just he just didn't hit it. And he pops it up. I mean, he, Zahn is not going to walk Winfield, and you wouldn't want Winfield to be up to getting a base on balls, even the guy before him walked. So let's see what Baylor, the DH, does now. He flied to right in the first inning. Fastball, but he missed. Not by much, but he just showed it to him. One ball and no strikes. Now, right now, if you're the hitter, play hitter. He missed with the fastball, the outside part of the plate. If you're Baylor, you've got to say, he's going to give me an off-speed pitch, and if he does, I'm going to jump all over it. Well, holding the ball along the seams, at least for that moment. 1-0 pitch. Nubbed foul to the right, and the count 1-1. One and one. When he throws his sinker, and that's a big bread and butter pitch along with the slider and the chain. When he throws his sinker, it's almost like a cut fastball. He puts all of the pressure on the index finger and no pressure on the middle finger. That's how Jeff gets that ball to sink. Ironically, facing a California MVP back in 1979. High pop foul down the right field line and slicing out of play. You have a great view when he's got that ball behind him, but you notice that he held the ball the same way both times because that's one of the spots that the coach looks for if he's going to try to steal a sign. Obviously, when he gets in the glove, he can still change the grip on it, but if he starts to change it right there, he's got it the same way every time. Now, if he starts to change it there, that's when you can call a pitch. Just keep in mind, now he hasn't done anything with it yet. You notice the pressure is always on that index, index finger. finger right yep. there. He's loose with that middle finger. Let's see if he's going to try and throw the sinker. One and two. Yes, sir. Fouled away. Well, unfortunately for the hitter, he doesn't have eyes like our cameras. Yeah, but the, if the coach had to sign, you say he can pick it up. How does he give it to the hitter? That's very simple. If the coach's arm is straight, for example, it would be sinker. If it was bent, it would be a breaking ball. Simple way to get the sign to the hitter, but it's, it's tough picking it up. You'd have to make sure. You'd watch it again now, and you see if he's got the same grip. Let's see. Yeah, you couldn't be sure. One and two. Ground ball to the hole. Backhanded by Schofield over to second to Wilfong, and he's out of the jam. So despite two errors, an infield single and a walk. Mr. Oakner, time for your conference call. Get me Jackson at the RF and find Bromley. Today, small businesses need phone systems that do more than handle calls. So ITT created System 3100. Where's Bromley? His calls were forwarded. I'll page him. The ITT System 3100 is a digital communication system that can do big things for small business, even handle data. Mr. Oakner, it's the boss. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. No, dear. When you buy a new car, you want to keep it looking new. And that's easy with Armor All Protectant. A scientific formula that took a polymer chemist 10 years to develop. It helps keep rubber, vinyl, leather, and plastic looking new. So even though you can't keep your car from getting old, you can keep it from looking old. Armor All. It's science, but it works like magic. For years now, we've been kidding Jim here about his eyesight. The fact is that Jim has the eyes of an eagle. Thanks, Boog. <laughs> Why, well, he's one of the first guys to spot light beer from Miller. Saw right away that light tastes great and it's less filling. Sure, all you have to do is read the label. It says light has one-third less calories than a regular beer. I think you want this, Jim. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> as I was saying, it's the same as the nose on your face. I light beer from Miller. Everything day. you always wanted in a beer and less. Oh, I don't believe this. 
runs, three hits, two errors for the Angels. No runs, three hits, no errors for the Yankees. As we have three innings in the book here in Yankee Stadium in a classic duel between Phil Necro and Jeff Zahn. They give you an idea of some milestones, huh? Rod Carew looking for 3,000 hits. Jackson getting very close to the 500 home runs. And Necro is just around the corner from 3,000 strikeouts. Jackson walked in the first inning. Knuckleball hit off the end of the bat slowly to third. Harris is there, guns it to Mattingly in time. You know, Phil Necro and his brother Joe have combined for a lot of victories in their career. The record for brothers, not Karamazov, would be Jim and Gaylord Perry. They won 529. Phil and Joe have 455 so far. But it means that Joe, who's 39, is going to have to get well into the 40s and probably will. Phil was talking about that. He said, if I could just pitch a couple more years. In fact, they tell me they have a dream of opposing each other as starters in the All-Star game and opposing each other as starters in a World Series game. Would that be one of the good ones? And one the, and one. And the man who taught him to throw it, his mom and his, his pop, rather, and his mom both watching the game, and that's the last thing he said to me, say hello to him before I, he walked out on the field. They met and had nine decisions, did the brothers Necro in the National League. Phil won five, Joe won four, and it seems to me that the last home run that Phil Necro ever hit, there it is. So Joe Necro's number one and only against Brother Phil. It's strange too to compare East versus West in the American League. That miss for ball four. For instance, the Yankees have lost in double figures and they have been buried behind the Tigers in the East. The Angels have lost in double figures and they're in first place. How about Toronto? They're playing well and they're really, I mean, you don't hear anything about them. Well, as Yogi was saying, they won. The Yankees won eight out of ten and lost half a game. Tiger thing is amazing. Here's the muscle man, Brian Downing, who singled to right field in the second inning. The Sensei at first with one out in the fourth, no score. Ball one. He's closed his stance against Nicro. Here's the West. You can see how they are stacked up. Last year, the Chicago White Sox ran away with it by playing above 500. They were the only team in the West above 500. At first, Doug DeSensei, one out in the fourth, no score. Two and one to count. And there he is, Lawrence Yogi Berra. Three times American League MVP, 15 times an All Star, and involved one way or another in 21 World Series. I think that every World Series played in New York, Yogi was involved. Well, now let's see. Besides looking at the MVP winners, Yogi was in 14 as a player, two as a manager with the Mets, two as a manager with the Yankees. Four as a Yankee coach and one as a coach of a Met team. So you might be right. Well, I'm not going back to 1927 and that, you know, when he was born. <laughs> two and two. Oh, I, I mean, you know, his father had to get the papers in order and my, with my pop and come <laughs> over and the whole thing. Two, two. There's a one hopper banged at second. Randall feeding Robertson over to Mattingly. Double play. The third double play turned in behind Phil Necro. Boy, are they sparkling at Yankee Stadium today. And at the end of three and a half innings, no score. It never fails. The one thing most people overlook about their cars is the belts. You see, after four years, they can go any time. And since today's belts don't show wear, even I can't always tell when just by looking. 
So if your car's over four years old, replace the belts and tell them you want gates. Now, they've been keeping engines cool for over 60 years, even longer than me. Remember, after four years, it's time for a change. I started delivering beer in 1893. At the time, Milwaukee was teaching America how to really brew a quality beer. Well, guess what? Times haven't changed all that much. This is today's Milwaukee's best, with a smooth old-time taste, old-time quality, and a real fair old-time price. Milwaukee's best. It's one of the best deals I've seen around here since 1893. Introducing Milwaukee's best, old-time quality at an old-time price. Watch this truck leap ahead. It's the small pickup that has the jump on all the others. Tough Ford Ranger. While small import trucks have had a 20-year head start, Ford Ranger has jumped to number one in just two years. With features like its V6 engine, most powerful of any small truck, the widest cab of any small truck, and exclusive twin I-beam suspension. No wonder Ford Ranger outsells Chevy S10, Toyota, and Nissan. It's the number one small truck in America. Yes, America's best-built trucks are built for tough. Tonight on Saturday Night Live. Will the real Stevie Wonder please grow up? Say Saturday Night Live. A pitching duel, Phil Necro and Jeff Zahn, scoreless as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. The Yankees will have Lou Pinella, followed by Don Mattingly and then Butch Weiniger. Zahn has allowed three hits, one walk. Got in trouble with a couple of errors, but worked his way out of it. And now here's Pinello. Grounded out to the right side to Rob Wilfong in the second inning. Jeff Zahn, 37 years old, with exactly a 500 record in the big league. 100 wins, 100 losses. Ball one. The Angels have had an odd start because it has been so sporadic. Despite this fact they're in first place. Right. The Angels started out five and eight, and you can put the blame on the pitching. Then they went 13 and four, and McNamara saw his club win five straight and get into first place. Then they turned around and lost seven out of nine when they just completely stopped hitting. The Yankees. They started out at a break-even rate of six and six, and then they went down to twos. They not only lost 11 of 13, they were shut out six times. Two times they were shut out back to back at home, and then they finally got their act straightened up. Fisted foul away. That's a great shot from center field with a guy like Zahn because Jerry Naren, the catcher, he just flashes signs. Really has not been given any targets, and Zahn has been picking his spots. First two pitches right on the outside corner. Breaking ball. And then he jammed him with the high fastball. Let's see what he does this time. Now watch Naren. Watch his glove. He'll just wait for the pitch. One and two. Fouled away. Second deck off to the right of the plate. It's still one and two to Lou. The Yankees this year have been shut out eight times. And just to go back to that remarkable spring. From a point in 1931 to a point in 1933, a stretch of 308 games, the Yankees always scored, never shut out. That's when they really were the bombers. That's pretty hard to believe. It is. So far, two teams in the American League have not been shut out this year, Baltimore and Toronto. One and two. Now the other way, outside of third and down the line. Every pitch works for him. There is no such thing as a waste pitch. I almost hate that term. It's, the pitch should be there to set your, your next pitch up. Schofield's coming in to get some glasses. The sun is kind of peeking through here. I like pitchers like Zahn because the infield's ready and then he really can throw any number of pitches when he's around the plate. He gives you something to go to. Jeb Zahn is trying to break a little two game losing streak as he tries to get his fifth victory. His last start, he gave up four runs and lost 
loss to Baltimore four to one his last victory he pitched a three hitter to beat Seattle and I guess that's been his best game so far this year. Remember he spent the early days of the season on the disabled list. He made his first start the middle of the second week of the season so he was a little bit behind and he's playing catch up now. One and two to Pinella no score bottom of the fourth. Fouled away. So they're taking that sinker and trying to go the other way with it. Well he's made a lot of pitches but only because they foul him off. Sound was a, was a whole lot like Whitey Ford. I mean nothing stuff but that he's what I call a wholesale pitcher. He'd like to make three pitches for three outs rather than a strikeout pitcher who at minimum needs nine pitches for three outs. He's trying to wholesale it. One and two. Missed with the sinker. I bet you this will be in the strike zone. Two balls and two strikes to Lou Pinello. Got a tough man up there as far as making contact. And Zahn, remember, is not a strikeout pitcher. Line drive, base hit to center. Well, not that you could calculate the odds of a base hit, but you could almost bet the house he was going to make contact. Pinella now needs only two more hits to give him 1,700 in his career. That's four hits off Zahn. Here's Don Mattingly, who grounded out in the second inning. He's a big ad for home cooking with that stat. Popped it up. Going out for it is Schofield. Coming in is Pettis, and Pettis will run him off the ball. Schofield said, I went into all the trouble of going in to get the sunglasses, and you won't let me use them. It was good to see because you have two rookies, Schofield is shortstop and Pettis, and Schofield was going out until somebody ran him off. And so Pettis, it was his job to run him off, and he did just that. You realize we're talking about the little duck? You had to bring it up, right? Yep. I remember when he signed his father as a rookie. Sure. Here's Butch Weiniger, but they're going to keep an eye on Pinella at first. Pinella likes the delayed steal. He doesn't have great speed, but he knows how to run the bases. And if they let up on him, he'll take the extra base. Weiniger's problem is to stay healthy for a whole year. He's really been unlucky in that department. Ball one. Last year was the third straight year that Weiniger was out of the lineup with injuries. He eventually became the Yankees' regular catcher last year, and his average never fell below 290. And he finished up hitting 296. He was a third baseman. He was moved to catcher in high school. Big chopper in the hole. There's Schofield, the short way for one, and that's all. He, he made that play look fairly easy, and yet he got over in the hole. It was a big hop, granted, but he still had to cover some ground. Look where that ball is. I don't like the way he plays. The Angels have to be a frustrated ball club when you realize they wanted two particular players, I was always led to believe, in the winter, one was Goose Gossage, whom they just missed getting, and the other was Julio Cruz, who would give them a lot of stolen bases. And then they traded, because they didn't get Gossage, they traded Tim Foley. Ground ball, one handed by DeSense, who throws and got him. You talk about on your numbers, DeSense on his back. And Politics and professionalism, there really was an Olympics where the only prize was glory. Stand up and cheer as the first Olympics begins tomorrow. There's no such thing as a low-priced car anymore. That's the rumor. Here's the truth. Your Tri-State Chevrolet dealer has 16 different Chevrolet models available with a base sticker price of under $7,000, including the Chevette two-door hatchback, the lowest-priced car built in the U.S., and six Cavalier models, America's fastest-growing line of front-wheel drive cars, import or domestic. 16 choices under $7,000. Low prices and quality mean value. See your Tri-State Chevrolet Dream Team dealer today. This imported beer is all that you'd expect. 
It has a rich, full-bodied, imported flavor, as you'd expect. And a deep, golden color to match its quality taste, as you'd expect. But here's one thing you probably won't expect. It's light. Amstel Light Beer. 95 calories, never tasted so imported. Amstel Light Beer, imported by Van Munching & Company, New York. Now they're big and meaty. Easy to open. They're big and meaty. Hold it. Can't we agree on one thing about Sun Giant Pistachios? They're big and meaty. They're easy to open. Oh, but Sun Giant Pistachios are big and meaty, see? Nah, they're easy to open. Watch. Oh, they're easy to open. What? Oh, let's settle on one thing. Why settle? No, why settle for peanuts? Yeah, we've got Sun Giant Pistachios. <laughs> These guys have taste. There's something good under the sun. Sun Giant Pistachios. They're big and meaty. Easy to open. They're big and meaty. Nah, Linda Gray and Louis L'Amour, Monday, live at 5. Want a show tomorrow on NBC Sports World. Hector Macho Camacho and Rafael Williams in the WBC Junior Lightweight Championship. Also, the Alabama Talladega 500, all tomorrow, right here on NBC Sports World. Necro has already warned Manningly about the putt. Manningly is back, but Necro indicated he'll be covering the line because Will Fong, as Ben pointed out, can really drop those punts. Well, he's a great butter. Then Gritch and Naren. 4 1, 1 0. Oh. Will Fong was acquired along with Doug Corbett from Minnesota in a deal that sent Tom Brunansky away in 1982. Way out in front of it. He started that swing sometime early this morning. One and one. Before this inning, Necro made 51 pitches, 28 strikes, and 14 batters. How do you compare with Zahn? 59 pitches, 42 strikes, 14 batters, 10 first pitch strikes for Zahn, 7 first pitch strikes for Necro. Oof, are they on the money? One and two to Rob Wilfong. Two and two. Necro, at least he did have over in the National League. Besides a fastball, he had a little slider that he'd throw once in a while. But his knuckleball is really working. There it is. Ground ball to first. Mattingly will flip to Necro covering. Remember, Necro has won five gold gloves, two in a row in his last two years in the National League. Bobby Gritch talks about facing a knuckleballer, and here's Bobby. First baseman. Well, let's see. In my career, I've faced, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe four, five, six knuckleballers. Uh, Wilbur Wood comes to mind. Uh, Eddie Fisher with the White Sox comes to mind. I've never faced uh, Phil Necro, but uh, I would imagine his ball be reacting basically the same when the ball comes in, and it's just it's unpredictable. Most often, it bites down, uh, usually from right hander. If it's coming from right handed pitcher, it will break down in a way. As a hitter, what you try and do is wait until the very last minute, not overswing, and try and take him up the middle if you can. Well, let's see if Bobby tries to take him up the middle right now. Ball one. Everybody's got a theory, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. Killebrew had the best. He said, you see the seams, try to hit in between the seams. <laughs> Thank you very much. One and one to count. To Bobby Gritch, who applied to right field in the second inning. No score in the fifth inning. In fact, in talking about no score, another note about Necro. You know, the, the biggest victim as a pitcher having your own team shut out was the great Walter Johnson. And the second in history is Phil Necro. Bad hop down the line, base hit. And Gritz will go for two, and the throw is dropped at second base by Randolph. He was out from the comes up with it and Gritch is not really committed even to this point and it's a short hop throw and that made the bat the, uh, the play a little difficult and Gritch is able to make it. The ball was there ahead of him but the short hop I tell you that short hop is a tough play when you got runners coming at you. So the Angels get a big break. They have a runner at second with one out and Jerry Naren the batter. In the fifth inning, no score. Jerry was a big man at Edmonton. Hit over 300, had over 100 RBIs. He had 27 home runs down there. But of course, New York's a long way from Edmonton in more ways than geography. Phil 
penalty throw. Trying to battle way out of a spot. One out, runner at second who shouldn't be there. No score in the fifth inning. Ground ball to the right side, big hop, and Randolph makes the play to Mattingly. The infield leaves a lot to be desired, apparently. It seems like when it gets right at the edge of the grass, if it hits there and the last two balls have done exactly that, it takes that big kangaroo hop. I don't think it's the effect of hitting a knuckleball that's doing it, do you? No, no, not at all. So here's the little duck. Dick Schofield hopped up in the third inning. He has really been struggling. Four hits in his last 34 at bats. The Angels, of course, are pretty much committed with him. They want him to just grow up and battle his way out of it. Right. Meanwhile, the Yankees could just about play an infield of shortstops. Because Harrop came up as a shortstop. Robertson and Foley. Of course, Roy Smalley. One and one. If he says hello, it's an address. Schofield. Yeah. Oh yeah. He is one of the quietest young men in, in all the game. Knuckleball is hit down to short. On the run is Robertson to get him. So the Angels got a break, but they left Rich at third base. And once again, Bill Negro bobs and weaves out of a jam. And at the end of four and a half. Angels nothing, Yankees nothing. Indianapolis, where the gladiators of the automotive world do battle. This year, even before the checkered flag has dropped, the Indy 500 has been won. The winner? A tire born of advanced design and innovative technology. The only tire to qualify. The only tire that every car in the Indy 500 will run on. When I started delivering beer back in 1893, the supermarket was a blacksmith shop. Well, those days are gone. But maybe not entirely. You see this? Today's Milwaukee's best. It's got a smooth, old-time taste. Old-time quality and a real fair, old-time price. Milwaukee's best. It's just the kind of deal that his great-great-granddaddy would have loved. Introducing Milwaukee's Best. Old-time quality at an old-time price. Nothing gets you closer to America than a motorcycle. And nothing takes you there like a Honda Goldwing. Baseball star Babe Ruth played what sport? Lacrosse. There's some people you just won't see when Pat Sajak hosts the College Bowl Championships live Wednesday. There's John McNamara, the manager of the Angels, and he is a class act. He piloted the Reds to the 79 title. But the point we want to make, that there are four American League managers whom he managed. Tony La Russa, who is now with the White Sox, of course, Renee Latchman with Milwaukee, Doug Rader with Texas and Pat Corrales with Cleveland. They have all had a little touch of John McNamara, which makes it worthwhile. And if I were catching right now, Vin, I'd holler at my infielders, watch the bunt. The Miller Most Valuable Player Award will be given at the end of the ball game, and it could be extremely difficult as Omar Marino unfolds his tent, and Omar takes ball one. Desensei taking your advice, looking for the bunt. 1 0. Marino had an infield single in the third inning. Desensei shortens up. Boy, that was as if he was going to sacrifice the way he turned around. I think he was going to maybe carry, carry his step farther and shorten up as if the bunt pull him in and then smack it on the ground past Desensei. He's got to Sensei on a trolley wire, moving him back and forth at third. Two and oh. Strike. Good one. Trouble with that is you can be thinking so much, end up with a bad headache and a time at bat. 
there's a big difference between going up there and guessing and going up there and hitting. And he did try that time. He was going to slap at it. The count two and two. He's done everything but put a Windsor knot in his kneecap. He's trying to figure out Zahn, and Zahn right now has the upper hand because he's really got Moreno thinking. One thing about Omar, at least over in Pittsburgh, no power, and yet he struck out a lot. Like that. One away. You know, this is an anniversary of a game I never saw, and yet I sure wish I had seen it. Fordham against Fairleigh Dickinson. No, it was, it was in 1969, and the Minnesota Twins were playing the Detroit Tigers, okay? Okay. And Cesar Tovar was at second, and Rod Carew was at first. Right. And they pulled a double steal. Yes. So now they got runners at second and third. Right. And Tovar now steals home. Okay. And then Carew steals third. Okay. And then Carew stole home, all in the same inning. And it tied up the game as you look at Rodney. It tied up the game 2 2. They blow it. Detroit wins it 5 4. Two steals of home. Same inning. In the same inning. Mm. 0 and 1. Right. He's an incredible player, Rod Curry. I oh. mean, you know, I mean, he did more. You're going to say, well, 3,000 hits? He, he said he's going to get 3,000 hits by September. But he gave me a tip on hitting. When you're tired and you go to a shorter bat, I don't believe. We're, we're going to try to get it in. Yeah, but it's too late, Joe. What do you mean? For me? <laughs> yeah. Boy, you. <laughs> Whoa. <I> mean, uh, <laughs> Blow out the candles, guys. All right. That was that was dreadful on my part. No, it wasn't dreadful. Right. It was really it rotten. It was planned. As well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and two, the cow, with one away in the fifth inning. Willie Randolph kept the streak alive. He's hit in nine straight. All right, really, what did he say? No, 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 we got it on tape. Oh, really? I will not destroy the, oh. the whole thing. When you hear this, and you, you, you got you to hear this. I will pay attention. One and two. After all, Rod Carew has the highest lifetime average among active players. His lifetime average is 331 as he sits near Ron Jackson. 331. Average. Hmm. Two and two. Sinker, and he sunk it. So Randolph, nine straight. He is two for three. That is hit number five off Zahn. But still no score in the fifth inning. And the batter, Toby Harris. Watch the stroke. He just right back up the middle. It's what Bobby Gritch was talking about, trying to hit a knuckleballer. Randolph did it to Zahn. Not trying to overpower him, just meet the ball and send it back up the middle. Now remember, Randolph was picked off when he slipped trying to get back. And Zahn has that great quick release to the plate. So let's see if the Yankees have a play on. One ball and no strikes. Gene Michaels, the stick in the third base coaching box, perhaps hanging out a sign for Hara. Hara has singled and walked. Hara does a good job of giving the coach a lot of time to run through a whole series of systems. One and oh. And that's lined to right, sinking for a base hit. Lynn tried to do a decoy that he was going to catch it. The Randolph just moved up 90 feet. Not a bad fake by Fred in right field. It was a good fake because he stopped Willie Randolph, and that's all you could do. He could not have gone to third. Keep in mind, now, the last time Winfield was up, he hit the first pitch. There is the uh, fake by Win uh, Lynn. Winfield hit that first pitch, an off-speed pitch. Let's see what happens this time. All right, you have runners at first and second with one out. Winfield came up with the bases loaded and one out in the third inning and fouled out. He came up following two hits in the first inning and lined out. So the big guys up there with a chance to hurt. No score in the fifth inning. And the Angels are moving around in the bullpen. And for Winfield, he couldn't ask for more. Randolph and Hara have been on base six times between them. Line drive, base hit to right field. Here's Randolph, and they're holding him on a perfect throw to the plate from Fred Lynn. 
That was absolutely dead perfect throw because if Grich wanted to cut it off, he could have. Aaron Holland let it go, and it was a one-hop easy play to handle, and Michael at third base very wisely held up the base runner Randolph, and he hit the first pitch again. And here comes uh, Marcel Latchman is going to go out and talk to Jeff Zahn. Look at that hop. You love that when he come like that. Coming up, of course, will be the D.H. Don Baylor. And in case you're wondering, Baylor has hit eight grand slams. Lou Gehrig, in his magnificent career, had 23. So Baylor flied to right, hit into a force play. Jim Slayton is up in the bullpen. And Jeff Zahn is on the ropes here with one out. Randolph single to center, Harris single to right, Winfield single to right to load the bases. Ball one to Baylor. No score, bottom of the fifth inning. That was close enough for the plate umpire, Greg Koss to have his right arm quiver as if he was almost going to bring it up for a strike. He just did keep it at his side. Now is when the hitter really is in the driver's seat. He can really pick his pitch. 2-0. and oh. A bluff to first. He was off the rubber. Baylor left the Angels as a free agent after their 82 division championship. Ground ball down to third to Sensei, down to second, back to first, double play, and Zahn has finessed his way out of a jam. The Angels, no runs, three hits, two left, and we have an absolute gem at the end of five, no score. Mixing cement, it's a dusty job. So Fram makes this terrific air filter to protect my Alice's engine. It's not just one filter, but two. Now Fram makes a double air filter for cars. Not just one filter, but two. The Fram Extra Life lasts 50% longer than the old Fram filter, but it doesn't cost any more. So why not put a Fram Extra Life in your car? Why put in one filter when you can put in two? My dad's always telling me that when he started in the construction business, he could carry all his tools in the back of a pickup. Now some of the tools could carry a pickup. No secret, just good work at a good price, right? Word of mouth did the rest. Folks at Meisterbrow do a good job. Sure we can afford any beer we want. But this tastes as good as Budweiser and doesn't cost as much. I think word of mouth on Meisterbrow is going to be pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Meisterbrow tastes as good as Budweiser at a better price. A day in the life of a Commodore 64. <laughs> Commodore 64. Once you get it, you'll wonder how you got along without it. Sports World makes big news. Hector Macho Camacho battles Rafael Williams. And the good old boys are at it again, riding into racing history at over 200 miles per hour. Come on down to the Alabama Talladega 500. NBC Sports makes big news in May. It's a Talladega, not a Jubilee. And it'd be anything but Jubilee in a junior lightweight championship for the WBC. Macho Camacho and Rafael Williams. That ought to be a great show tomorrow, right here on NBC Sports. Sports World. We ought to build this series since the Angels and the Yankees started to roll in the dirt last night. We have had eight double plays. The Angels came up with four double plays behind Tommy John last night. The Yankees have come up with three behind Necro. And the Angels just came up to bail out Zahn. So eight DPs so far in 15 innings. Hmm. And here is Gary Pettis. He's two for two, single to right. Remember, he was confused, thought it was a ground rule double. Right. One and one. And then single in the third inning. But Lynn hit into the double play. 
Pettis a switch hitter. Little roller. Foul ball. You're going to get a lot of double plays when you have pitches around that plate because the infielders are ready. They're anticipating. They want that ball hit to them. And it's the guys who run the count to three and two, three and two, two and two, three and two. You're, you're back on your heels. On your heels is where Pettis has been as a left handed batter. Almost all of his strikeouts have been as a left handed hitter. Give you an idea, he has struck out 37 times this year, 29 of them as a left handed hitter. So he has to shorten up and make contact from this position. Ground ball to the right side. And that's Willie Randolph, and that means one away. Joe had an interesting chat with Rod Carew. It would pay us all to listen. I had never heard this question before. Rod, when you go to a shorter bat, how do you make the bat look longer? Ted Williams asked you that. What do you do? Well, you know, I told Ted that, you know, with the trademark shown on this side, uh, if you want to go to a shorter bat and you want the bat to still seem like it's longer, you turn the bat, the trademark away from your face so you see nothing. Once the bat's turned this way, then, you know, you can see this much and it's going to still make the bat look short. So if, if you're looking at the blank side of the bat, you see nothing, so the bat is going to look just as long as it was before. You know what's interesting about that from the time I could learn to walk I was always told you never hit with the label up. What do you mean? Then it would break the bat. You know, in other words you never showed the label side of the bat. Never. That's one of the oldest things I ever heard in the sandlot. Well they always told us you had to read the label. Are you bat with break? Yeah, well that's okay. If you're looking at the label, it's on the other side of the ball. But if you're hitting with the label facing the pitcher, you're gonna break your bat. And the classic story is that somebody said that to Aaron to Aaron and he said, I ain't reading up here. So here is a great hitter like Carew talking about the label, and there's a line drive at shortstop Robertson. Two down. But when you get tired as a hitter, they always go to a most of the time a lighter bat or a shorter bat. And I never heard anybody no. saying I want the bat to look longer so I just turned the label so I couldn't read it. Yeah I don't quite understand. Of course a guy that. like Carew could hit with a toothpick. He'd hit 280 with that. Let me ask you he wasn't putting you on. No he's as serious as he could be. Well here's somebody as serious as he can be. Reggie Jackson in Yankee Stadium. Right. I said to Reggie what Carew told me he said I don't want it longer I want it fatter. Fatter yeah. Well let's see he has walked and grounded out. And he's a winner, as you can see. One and one. He used a great expression. He said, you have to have the eye of the tiger, the killer instinct. And he was talking about Sugar Ray Leonard coming back and retiring again. He said, you can't just turn it on for 45 minutes. You have a battle here of a home run hitter and a fellow who has allowed only one home run this year. I think it was Ricky Henderson. On the corner. Two and two. Reggie has averaged 30 home runs, 90 RBIs for each of his 16 major league seasons. And he's trying to forget last year. See you later. The Negro. it is when it's on it's on and when it's off it's off it's washerless design helps keep it from dripping so it lasts and lasts and lasts Delta faucet we're first because we last these are the men who built Mustang SBO who made the engine turbocharged and intercooled. The shocks gas-filled Coney's, the tires Goodyear NCT's, who put disc brakes on all four wheels because they think more about precision and discipline and zero to 50 than they do about nine to five. They are Ford Special Vehicle Operations. And this is Mustang SVO. Have you driven the best built American cars? Have you driven a Ford lately? Welcome. 
Working at charter, your days belong to somebody else, but your nights are all yours. Two Miller time! Now comes your time with the best beer you can find. Miller High Life. Bring your thirsty self right here. You've got the time we've got the beer for what you have in mind. Welcome to Miller time. Hi, I'm Doug DeSensa, California Angels. I hope you join us next Saturday in Anaheim against the world champion Baltimore Orioles. We're going to the bottom of the sixth inning. No score in the ball game. Jeff Zahn and Phil Necro, as advertised, lock up in a gym. Don't forget, double header next week. Most of you will see the Dodgers and the Mets. Others will see the Cardinals and the Braves. And the second game, the champion Orioles against the Angels or Kansas City Royals visiting the Boston Red Sox. Baseball game of the week, double header next Saturday, right here on NBC Sports, where the memories are waiting. For whatever reason, and perhaps later on we will get the word, but Bobby Gritch has had to come out of the game. So Ron Jackson, there he is, he's at first base, and Gritch has come out. Right. Pinella followed by Don Mattingly and Butch Weiniger. Pinella has grounded his second single to center, one for two. No runs, four hits for the Angels. No runs, seven hits for the Yankees. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. The Yankees are piling up the men left on base. And there's a base hit for Pinella. He's two for three. So Jeff Zahn has allowed eight First hits. Hit. And Pinella needs just one more for 1,700 in his career. I mean, look at Bobby Gritch. Manly coming up. He's not had good cuts against Son. And I bet the sensei on the mound right now is saying, I'm looking for the punt right now. We're not sure as to why Gritch came out. He didn't look particularly ill, but he's out of there. So we'll get word. And the body is down by Mattingly, but foul. So Ron Jackson charging in from first base. Oh, and one to count. Remember, we were talking about how the sacrifice bunt had virtually disappeared for the Yankees last year. There you can see the Yankees have had men on base in every inning but the second inning when they were retired in order. They've had the bases loaded twice in the third and fifth and come up empty. Swinging and a high fly ball into right center. Fred Lynn along with Gary Pettis. It's Lynn. One away. That probably took a little time. For Fred Lynn, normally the center fielder and the captain, not only to defer the position to a rookie, but to allow the rookie to be the captain of the outfield, if he is indeed that. Well, he has to be in center field. You just get it because you have to catch everything that comes out there and run people off. Somebody's got to take charge, and it's the center fielder. There's Butch Weininger now, grounded out, hit into a force play, 0 for 2. Off speed, ball one. Yankees leaving seven. Weiniger grounded to third, hit into a force play. In there. And that was a good change. Butch Weiniger caught Dave Rigetti's no hitter on July 4th last year. With George Steinbrenner's birthday. One and one. Talking about birthdays, Reggie Jackson celebrated his 38th yesterday. Rick Cerrone celebrates his 30th birthday today, although he's on the DL, tenderness of the right elbow. And Tommy John, who pitched brilliantly last night, will celebrate his 41st birthday Tuesday. 
three and one. Now that's a it's a big pitch for Zahn not to get three and one. If he, you know he's going to run him three and two with one man out, so if you're going to run him three and two, you run him three and one. Let's see what Yogi does. And he has walked only one. Hara back in the third. The first thing he does is try to tie up Pinella a little bit. Slayton is up for the second time in the Angel bullpen. Runner going late on a strike. The throw down to Wilbon back to Jackson not in time. Somebody missed the sign. That was not a steal play. But as I say you run three and two you run them three and one and Pinella was watching to see what would happen and when Weininger took it he knew he was in no man's country. I mean it's really a slow developing play and he right here he makes the U turn to throw his high and there's no way they get him. That's good base running by Pinella. Watch him. Now he's watching it all the way and he sees the sign is the play's broken up so he's going to erase the mistake and he does. He's going 3 2 and there's a bouncer down to second on the bag for one. There's another double play. So Weiniger bangs into the double play 4 3. That is the sixth, well, it's the fifth and now sixth double play in the game. No score at the end of six. NBC presents a five hour miniseries about the men and women who dared to dream of glory and challenge the world. The first Olympics begins tomorrow. It's here. The quick response and smooth performance of new Exxon Extra, our highest octane unleaded gasoline ever. Its extra boost of octane quiets the knocks, silences the pings for extra smooth performance. New Exxon Extra, quality you can count on. Ah, uh, 47 apricot souffles in one evening. I think that's a world record. It was all for one gentleman, too, didn't you know that? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, courage, my dear. You were terrific. Care for a souffle? I don't think so. How about a magnum of Chateau Canadien? Oh, oh, as always, Jacques, a perfect choice. Call me Jack. Sure. Molson Golden from North America's oldest brewery, Molson of Canada, since 1786. Molson makes it golden. Here's to another night in the cellar. <laughs> <laughs> and more dough. <laughs> It's Tom Clark delivering at 928. It's a 727 over the Golden Gate. It's Bill Flynn coming through when time can't wait. It's UPS next day air, and that means getting it there. Getting it there for American industry with early morning delivery, speed, economy. It's Jim Wilson getting jets on their way. It's the UPS system working night and day. It's UPS next day air, and that means getting it there. Getting it there. Lords of the Ring Inside Pro Wrestling starts Tuesday at 6. We repeat that note that we had given you earlier about pitchers losing because of the opposite number pitching a shutout. Walter Johnson 65 and look at that. Phil Necro lost 53 times where his team failed to score a run. And the great Cy Young 48. Necro, who has allowed only two fly balls. Bobby Gritch hit a fly ball to right field in the second inning. And Dick Schofield popped a ball up on the infield. There was one line drive that Fred Lynn hit at the shortstop. So DeSense has struck out and walked. Then Downing and then Will Fon. Right. I know I'm a little partial, but you certainly have to admire the game that Weiniger is catching. He has not dropped. I, I can't remember him dropping the ball. I thought Bruce Benedict used to do a good job in Atlanta, and he did. Yeah. But Weiniger is right up there. 0 and 1. Knuckleball pulled, but playing deep in the hole is Robertson. Kicks it, recovers, and pulled his man off the bag. Mattingly could not do the toe dance. And so DeSense is aboard. He gets the air. Robertson tries to make the long throw. You can see Mattingly off the bag and DeSensei is on. So the Angels had committed two errors to put Jeb Zahn in trouble. Now we have an error by Robertson to open up an inning. The Yankees 
have been their own worst enemies defensively. They've now committed more errors in games played. 44 errors in 36 games. That's the most in the American League. The Phillies have made more errors than that. The last I looked, it was 48. What's that? In? We have met the enemy and they are us. <laughs> Line down the right field line, foul and out of play. And the count 0 1 to Brian Downing. We're getting a report on why Bobby Gritch had to come out of the ball playing. And apparently he is bothered by the flu and the combination of the humidity and the flu, and he's gone. And of course, they played a 10 inning game last night. Downing single to right, hit into a double play, one for two. Double plays in two games so far between these two teams. Desense at first, held on by Mattingly. One and one to Brian Downing. Knuckleball hit into right center field, and that's going to go through. Winfield chasing into the fence. Desense is being waved in by Preston Gomez. Randolph throw to the plate. He scores. Desense got jammed at home plate. His footsies are going to be aching just a little bit. He had half to play, and Weidinger took it away from him, but a bit late. Watch it. Watch his left foot. See him turn it? And as he turned it, Desense jammed into it. Get another look at it. He see him coaching himself when he rounded second base. He said, I can score. Now he sees half the plate. He slides for that half. Now watch Weininger's foot. Well, you couldn't see it on that shot. The other angle you could where he just turned it. Tell you one thing, it was a great throw yes, by Willie was. Randolph, too. Whew. Ball one. So the Angels take a one to nothing lead on a double by Downing. As he hit it to the wall, it's 385 up the alley. That's where the ball went. So the error is cashed in. One nothing California. And here's Rob Wilfong. Still nobody out. And he pulls down the right field line out of play. Let's take another look at that play at the plate, Joe. Look at his foot now. See him turn it right there? That's what catchers will do. They'll keep the foot straight, give you half the plate. Once you commit yourself, they'll turn the foot, hoping that you'll hook the shin guard and slide off. And Desensei came straight in and beat the play. One ball and one strike. Line drive down the right field line. Foul. I'll tell you, you might say to yourself in this kind of a game, Will Fong swinging away. It might also come as a surprise to you. On the Angel team, Rob Wilfong is leading in hitting with men in scoring position. So with a runner at second base, they're letting him hack away on the count one and two, even though the Angels were looking bunt. On deck, remember, is Ron Jackson finishing up for Bobby Gritch. A little foul the other way. The Angels one run five hits. The Yankees no runs eight hits. Remember though the other note we gave you about how poorly the Angels do if they don't hit a home run. There's a drive to right. Winfield to the wall. Can't get it. It's off the wall. Coming to third is Downing. They are waving him in and going to third. Wilfong and he has picked up another man from scoring position. It looked like Winfield for a moment thought that ball was going to be out of here. He did take a big gash out of that uh, protection, that rubber foam along the fence. Now watch him right here. He's not really sure where he is, and he, he looked like he thought he was closer. Takes a couch out of it, but it's a three base hit. First baseman. So Yogi studying the lineup and the availability of switches that he could have at his command, and now he's on the phone of the bullpen. Nobody out in the inning. An error, a double, and a triple. And there's 
ball one to Ron Jackson. So they shorten up the infield, and the Angels leading the Yankees two to nothing. A little extra pressure on Weiniger, of course, handling a knuckleballer with a runner at third. It's one of those plays, Ben. I'm glad you pointed it out that if a pitcher doesn't have confidence in his catcher with the man on third, he's going to let up. Negro said he doesn't. Now back. He says, I know that, that Weiniger is going to catch that ball. And when a pitcher feels like that, he throws with complete confidence. Down in the bullpen, right hander Clay Christensen is loosening up for the Yankees. One and two. And that's hit into left field. Coming up for it is Pinella to make the catch. Tagging is Wilfon. The throw to the plate. He scores. So Jackson picks him up with a fly ball to left field. And the Angels now have some breathing room. They're going to contend that Wilfon had Jerry left third too soon. But Jim Evans says no. So the run is in. Here's how it all began. The ground ball to Andre Robertson. Then the hurried throw, and Mattingly tried to stay on the bag, couldn't do it. And from that followed the double by Downing, the triple by Wilfong, and the scoring fly ball by Ron Jackson. Jerry Naren with the count one ball and no strikes. Two and oh. You know you probably it's hard to believe because the Yankees have such a marvelous combination of old and new there's another base hit Necro the old and of course the young is Jose Rio the 19 year old in the Yankee bullpen the interesting point is that the first major league victory that Phil Necro ever won little did he know that day was the same day that Jose Rio was being born. May the 13th, 1965. I mean, that's. <laughs> but I don't think he's going to see Rio because the Angels are too far out in front of him. It's 3 0 California in the seventh. And the Yankees are not a come from behind team. Well, let's say, face it, when you're laboring where they are in the standings, you're not coming from behind at all. Bob Shirley is up along with Clay Christensen. The Yankees have only won three games out of 18 if the other team scores first. Right. So Schofield popped up and grounded out, and it has suddenly come apart at the seams for Phil Necro. Three nothing Angels in the seventh. Fastball and a high fly ball to left field. Pinella is there with a lot of room. That's only the second out of the inning. The batter will be Gary Pettis with Jerry Naren at first. Pettis has two singles and grounded out, two for three. Gary hitting 231. To look ahead, the Yankees try to get off the floor in the bottom of the seventh. They'll have Andre Robertson, Omar Moreno, and Willie Randolph. Available if Yogi wants to go the other way. His left hand hitters, well, he has Oscar Gamble, Ken Griffey, and Steve Kemp. He has switch hitter Roy Smalley. He also has Foley and O'Berry with the runner going. Pettis fouls it off. So Naren back to first. McNamara must feel that uh, Negro is not paying too much attention to Naren. Two outs, and uh, he doesn't exactly have that great speed at first base. He just picked the situation. Maybe laxity on Negro's part. He said, hey, I'll start him. They're playing a little bit behind him. Should get a good jump. He's not going. That got away. One and two. That's one thing, even though the numbers eight and nine spots are coming up in the American League, you're the pitcher 
you still have a shot at it. You still stay in there, thanks to the DH. DH. National League, you know he's saying to himself, I'm finished. This is my last inning. I'm gone. It's a big difference. Ball three. So the dancer is all over the floor now. Three and two with two down. Naren ready to go from first. Fastball hit down to short, and Robertson kicks it. And so we've had four errors in the game, and two of them by Andre Robertson, who can just shake his head. He looked like he was doing everything right except catch it. The ball was right at him. He got down, and all of a sudden, that last hop, boop, there it was. Let's watch it, see if we can pick it up. Got cut right, took a little bit of a bad hop right in front of him. I guess it's hard to play on those cobblestone fields. Apparently that infield, the ball has really been doing tricks all day. And here's Freddie Lynn now, the strike. Remember, you give the Angels all this opportunity. The errors, they've cashed him in. They've had a double and a triple. And they're the league's leading home run hitting team. Line to right field, Winfield is there. Put together a double, a triple, a single, and an error for a three run inning. At the end of six and a half, Angel three, Yankees nothing, and now a salute on the seventh inning stretch to Phil Rizzuto. Old Spice presents. <laughs> the seventh inning stretch, brought to you by Old Spice Aftershave and Cologne. Splash on the feeling, splash on Old Spice. A wide-eyed New York Yankee rookie in 1941, diminutive Phil Rizzuto broke into the major leagues by hitting 307. Always a pesky hitter, Rizzuto also made artful use of the bunt. He was notoriously afraid of snakes and lightning, but Rizzuto had brave hands afield for the double play. On the bases, the scooter was a constant threat to steal, and in 1950, Rizzuto was the American League's MVP. During his 13 seasons with the Yankees, Rizzuto's shortstop shenanigans keyed seven world championships. A beloved Yankee broadcaster for the past 25 years, Phil's trademark is a hearty, holy cow! But Phil Rizzuto is best remembered as a pint-sized shortstop with a heart as big as New York. All you gotta do is smell the coffee, splash on Old Spice. Now you're moving, isn't it nice? Up and Spice. Nobody sends more guys out there than America's favorite, unmistakably masculine Old Spice. Splash on the feeling, splash on some spice. And now, to soothe sensitive skin, try Old Spice conditioning aftershave. Len Berman in New York, top of the ninth in Toronto. White Sox have the tying run at second. Darryl Boston, ground ball, Dennis Lamp covers. That's it. Toronto wins at 1 0. They're fifth straight. You know, Vin and Joe in any other division, they'd be in first place. Back to the stadium. Well, all right, Len, and maybe Toronto should get a medal, but I'm mighty proud and delighted that my partner and friend, Mr. Joe Garagiola, received a medal. There's a picture of it from the government of Italy. And Joe, what was the background to that medal? It was for, uh, I think the wording was uh, honor my Italian origin and contributions to Italian baseball for their participation. Uh, they, they have a league. I did a baseball world show, and I've been doing what I can along with Perry Pilati, who is the representative over here. And they're going to be in the Olympics, and I'm happy to be a part of it. Well, we're delighted, and we congratulate you sincerely. Nice call. Thank you. High fly ball to straightaway center to Gary Pettis. One away. By the way, all things are not going swimmingly for the Angels. You know, Bobby Gritch had to come out because of the flu. And I don't want to scare Buzzy Bavese or Gene Autry back in California. But something happened in the Angel bullpen, and John Curtis, the left hander, came in with his hand heavily wrapped in a towel. And went down into the dugout and eventually back into the clubhouse. So evidently, he ripped a fingernail. And what that will mean about his pitching future, we don't know. Ground ball to shortstop to Schofield. And that will take care of Marino. Two down. But it could be that the Angels, who have several men on their DL, Ozzie, Forsh, Keeson, Burleson, Sconyers, and Valentine, 
now have John Curtis banged up. But they have Jeffries on, who is leading 3 0 here in the seventh inning with two down. And Willie Randolph will be the batter. Randolph, two singles aboard on an error. Two for three is hit in nine straight. Ground ball to short. Schofield. Can't believe this one flying. Goes on with a minimum effort, goes through seven. And at the end of seven, the Angels three and the Yankees nothing. Welcome to Miller Time. At Miller High Life, time is everything. Beer drinkers come to us because we've been brewing an extra quality for the last 129 years. That's a lot of our time. But it's the reason you spend your time with us when you want the best beer you can find. Miller High Life. Seventeen hours. That's how long it took us to paint this house with the brush. Then we painted it in just six and a half hours with a Wagner power painter. This wicker chair took over an hour, but less than five minutes with a Wagner power painter. A shutter that took 20 minutes, a power painter finished in only three. It's a tool so versatile, it has a flexible spray tip and a way to draw paint right from a can. A Wagner power painter. It's the right tool for painting. World makes big news. Undefeated Hector Macho Camacho battles Rafael Williams. Is the Macho Man with the devastating hands ready for this Latin American champion? A showdown inside the ring that will make headlines. NBC Sports is big news in May. Yes, with Camacho and Williams, Joe, it ought to be a good fight. We got a dandy here, but before you know it, the game will be over at the rate we're flying. Three pitches, three outs for Zahn. He's moving right along. You said it before. There may be both of them double parked out there. Maybe so, so let's go down instead of looking at us. Reggie Jackson will start it off. He'll be followed by Doug DeCinze and then Brian Downing. That's fouled away. Reggie walked, grounded to third, and struck out. And he has struck out 17 times in his last 10 games. He's struggling a little bit. Oh, that must have looked like a basketball. Oh. It just came floating up there, and Reggie has to regroup. He's backed out of the batter's box. Now, with two strikes on him, he'll really throw the snake. Oh, and two the counter, Reg. His cut didn't get it. This is from behind Necro. Watch him put the extra on it. And there it was. Look at it break down. Two strikes, no balls. He gave him that Sunday snake. Well, it didn't seem to bother John McNamara. After all, the ball club is leading 3 0. So Reggie had something funny to say, which is why I think he's been around so long as DeSense hits one foul. 0 and 1. So Doug DeSense. Who had struck out and walked and then hit the ground ball in the seventh inning to Robertson and Andre kicked it and that opened up the dike. Then Browning, Downing doubled him home. Will Fong tripled Ron Jackson's fly ball and it was a three run inning. How do you like that one? That was a Rip Sewell. Ephus Ephus. They show movies when they throw that. Oh, and two. Line drive, fair ball down in the corner, and I see a fan touch that one. We'll have no confusion. The ground rule double. 
Necro's really disgusted. He's storming around the mound because he had two strikes. He tried to throw something besides a knuckleball, and you can see he's disgusted with himself because he gave him a good pitch to hit. He jumped out in front of him very quickly and then gives him that big room service pitch. And he just is talking to himself, and he got it off his chest at least. If you wonder how many doubles DeSensei has, he's wearing it. 11, which ties him to the league lead. Ball one. George Bell of Toronto also has 11. So that means suddenly in the last inning and a third, the Angels have come up with two doubles and a triple. They're leading three to nothing in the eighth. Three runs, eight hits for the Angels, no runs, eight hits for the Yankees. The Yankees with eight singles. And the Angels with those extra base hits. Fouled away, off to the right, out of play, and the count two and one. They're talking about days in history. We were, yesterday was an interesting day in history. It was the first time, really. That baseball players went on a strike. Bouncer up the middle, and that's going to be more than a strike. It's going to cost Necro another run. And when it is overrun by Moreno, it means an extra base. And Necro must be disgusted with himself as the Angels add another and lead four to nothing. An error charge to Moreno. And Yogi Berra going out. So suddenly it's just not knuckling. We have a moment you might find it interesting. In 1912, Ty Cobb was suspended. And Huey Jennings, the manager of the Tigers, was afraid that if he didn't field a team against the Philadelphia A's, that they would not only lose but get in more trouble. Because all of the players refused to play. If Cobb is suspended, I ain't playing. Uh -huh. So they went out and recruited a lot of college players to play. So college players in 1912 took the field against the Philadelphia A's. Now I would love to be able to tell you that the college players upset the A's. But the A's won it 24 to 2. And life goes on. <laughs> Necro goes out. When IBM personal computer owners look for good software, where can they turn? To IBM for programs that help you keep up with modern times. Business programs, entertainment, productivity, education, and more. The variety you want with the quality you expect in the growing library of IBM personal computer software. A well-balanced selection at a store near you. Welcome. You've turned the city over to the next shift. The rest of the night is yours. Two Miller time. Now comes your time with the best beer you can find. Miller High Life. Bring your thirsty self right here. You've got the time. We've got the beer for what you have in mind. The Baseball Hall of Fame is located in Cooperstown, New York, and millions have gone to see it. But this year, the Hall of Fame could be coming to you. At selected shopping malls across the country, the traveling Hall of Fame exhibit containing an historic collection of mementos and displays will help bring America face to face with the rich history of its national pastime. Baseball fever, catch it, it lasts forever. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. The Angels leading the Yankees four to nothing in top of the eighth inning. Remember earlier we told you that it was an accident in the Angel bullpen as we see Bob Shirley pick up for Phil Necro. Joe I think we got a report on John Curtis as to what happened. It says officially. Curtis cut left thumb catching ball on awning in bullpen. And the next question will be why was he catching a ball on the awning in the bullpen? 
In other words, maybe maybe you throw the ball up on the awning and it's like a little kid, it rolls down and you jump in the air and grab it. Who was it? Now let me think. Ron Reed. Jumped up and he was playing was it basketball. Ron Reed? No, I'm thinking of uh, Cecil Upshaw, maybe. Somebody with the Braves, a tall relief pitcher, had gone to the movies. It was Reed, was it? And he jumped up to touch a marquee or an awning and got his ring finger caught and almost lost his finger. Mm -hmm. Remember? Yeah. Well, it's something like that, I guess, with John Curtis. Ball one to Wilfong. Standing at second base, Brian Downing. It's all Angels, 4 nothing here in the eighth inning. What about Necro? Now, did you think he lost his knuckleball? No, I thought he was trying to get cute and get away from his knuckleball. Uh, he got the two strikes and he threw that slow curve to the sensei uh, and he doubled and then uh, Downing hit a lollipop pitch. It was not the knuckler. So Bob Shirley picking up for Phil Necro with one out in the eighth inning and the Angels leading four to nothing. When the Yankees bat in the bottom of the eighth, they are due to send up Hara. Winfield and Baylor that's the numbers two three and four hitters two and one the so Wilfong trying to keep it going as walk rounded out and then triple remember he hit one high off the right field wall and he walks so the Yankees who came into the game Four games under 500 and 14 and a half games back at Detroit are down four to nothing in the eighth inning. Toronto won their game to win five in a row, but of course they began seven and a half behind the amazing Tigers. Ball one. Ron Jackson who picked up for Bobby Gritch who went down with the flu bug. Jackson had a scoring fly ball in the seventh inning to pick up an RBI. While Gritch went one for two and now timeout. Jeff Torborg going out to talk to Bob Shirley. Well, Jeff's from the old school and conversations like this there's no great strategy going on it's simply hey quit nibbling throw some strikes we can't defense the base on balls give the guys a chance to make the play they'll make the play Yogi knows as we look at him that his bullpen has done a complete about face the earned run average for the Yankee bullpen was over four in April and now in May the earned run average is less than one and a half so it has become reliable. Chuck Adams from the commissioner's office just called uh -huh. and it was Cecil Upshaw. Thank you sir. Would you like to try for fifty dollars. Uh, does this mean a look at Phil Necro. He doesn't want to try for anything now except his next start. Three and oh the count. The Angels with runners at first and second leading four nothing and trying to break it wide open now at the expense of Bob Shirley. You know, last Sunday, the Yankees, having played 42 innings over the previous three days, and they were desperate for pitchers, Shirley started against Seattle. And he pitched the first five innings of a combined shutout to gain credit for a victory in his first start of the year. Ground ball down to short. Bad hop. They get the one, they get the two. And I'll tell you what, nothing comes easily. Robertson is rubbing his chest as if he was shot under the heart. But they come up with their fourth double play to restore order. And at the end of seven and a half, the Angels four runs, nine hits. The Yankees no runs, eight hits, three errors. Now, Ford Ranger does it. Breaks out with a great low price. That's right, just $59.93 on the pickup with quality unbeaten by any major small truck maker. Based on a survey of owner-reported problems during the first three months, and Ranger has a wider cab than any small truck. Plus, power, payload, and tough twin I-beam suspension. Yes, Ford Ranger puts it all together. An 84 pickup at an 83 price. The best-built American trucks are built. Ford Tough. Look how water can destroy unprotected wood, but not if it's protected with Thompson's Water Seal. 
Use Thompson's Water Seal Waterproofer on dozens of surfaces. Brush on Thompson's for an invisible barrier that helps prevent water from entering and damaging brick, wood, and concrete. Your house isn't really protected until it's protected with Thompson's Water Seal. Many stores now have special values on Thompson's Water Seal. So this is the new log cabin. Thanks for giving me a hand. Hey, what are friends for? Here's to good friends. Tonight's kind of special. Try it this way. The beer we'll pour says something more somehow. Looks like we're about done, huh? Not yet, you're not. Tonight, tonight. Not a bad day's work. Next weekend, we put in the pool. Let it be low and brown. The American tradition continues with an old-fashioned doubleheader and baseball's best of the West. The Dodgers battle the Mets, then the world champion Orioles take on the Angels, or the Cardinals face the Braves and the Royals clash with the Red Sox. The teams are here. The memories are waiting. Next Saturday. Well, the memories are waiting next Saturday for the doubleheader. We've already provided some part of a memory as far as today's game is concerned, hooked up to last night as Toby Harrah takes ball one. Last night, the Angels had four double plays back of Tommy John. We have had six double plays today. Four turned in by the Yankees, and two turned in by the Angels. So we've had ten double plays in two games, and that ties a record. What's interesting is, it's only happened once in the National League, and that's over 50 years ago. It's the fourth time in American League history, and the last time was 12 years ago. Boy, that's a lot of DPs on an infield where you should have an insurance policy before you go out there. Hospitalization. Blue Cross. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> two and two. Four nothing in favor of the Angels. The Yankees trying to get well. Harrow, Winfield, and Baylor trying to get up off the floor. Ground ball to the right side. Will Fong makes it look easy. One away. By the way, the Angels made a change. Juan Beniquez is now in left field for Brian Downing. So Juan Beniquez for Downing. There he is. Dave Winfield lined out to center, fouled out with the bases loaded, and singled a right to load the bases. So the Yankees have themselves to blame. They've had a lot of people on base, but they've stranded them all. And of course, it's a club that's been shut out eight times already this year. That's right. Boy, it must have been something to be in his spot. Take your pick. You want to play football, baseball, or basketball in the big leagues? I think he picked the right sport. I do, too. One and one. One out in the eighth. Angels four, Yankees nothing. Little number over the mound. Charging Schofield. Scoops, throws, gets him. Good play. Dick Schofield makes a fine play with the glove. He charges the ball hard. He has shown great range. You can see why the Angels are committed to a youngster like that. And I'll tell you, the first thing that a rookie has to really overcome is the fact that the guys he's playing against are people that he has read about and heard about, but they're not supermen. And that's a big hurdle. Here's Don Baylor, a one hopper with a lot of English on it. Boy, that was right out of the pool hole. He hit that off the cue stick, and Schofield gets it. So a quick eighth inning. Boy, Jeff Zahn sure takes you apart without you even feeling the pain. And at the end of eight, four nothing Angels. Working hard when the pressure's on could mean perspiration order. Right Guard Roll-On helps stop wetness better than the leading roll-on as it kills the bacteria that can cause perspiration odor.
can a guy 5'9 have an unfair advantage over these guys? I use the Gillette Atra Racer. They don't. It's got the advantage of a pivoting head. Atra is better than twin blade razors that don't pivot. See? They don't always stay in my beard. But my Atra pivots to keep both blades on my beard longer. So I get a better shave. Close. Comfortable. Get the Gillette Atra and get the Atra advantage. Sometimes a little advantage goes a long way. Okay, guys, you're on your own. Here's to good friends. Ready? Ready as I'll ever be. Tonight is kind of special. Whoa! Last one down by the lower brow. Beer will pour. We'll say something more so high. So tell me, were you scared? No. Tonight. Me too. Did it be <laughs> Before politics and professionalism, there really was an Olympics where the only prize was glory. Stand up and cheer as the first Olympics begins tomorrow. Mr. Jeffrey Clayton Zahn. And remember, when he was 30 years old, he had amassed the grand total of six Major League victories. But stick to itiveness. Now, at the age of 37, he has won 100 big league games, and he's on his way to his fifth win of 1984. And he's the kind of a pitcher who gives you those comfortable collars. You go back to the hotel, say, boy, he's nice to hit. And you look in the box score, and you're 0 for 4, 0 for 3. And now we'll look at Clay Christensen. Missing away to Jerry Naren, ball one. Clay Christensen, he's big enough to do the job. 6'5", 205 pounder. High fly ball to left field, pretty deep. Pinella going back, but he's got a lot of room. One away. So it's been Necro for seven and a third, Shirley for two thirds of an inning, and now Christensen. You know, it's a good point you make how big Christensen is because when you bat against a guy who's that big, you do get the feeling of hitting uphill, and yet against a guy like Zahn, it's like teeing off on an elevated tee. You just feel better. Oh, I'm sure that there has to be more fear in looking at a big man on the mound. I would sure think so. Oh, yeah. Busted back, ground ball to third, and there is Hara. That's the last hurrah. Two down. I kind of dropped that in, hoping you would. I certainly hope so. Yeah, yeah, right. I certainly hope you just dropped it in. <laughs> I keep waiting. For... He's a trivia question, you know. <laughs> yeah, he spelled his name frontwards and backwards the same way. There you go. Toby, huh? how'd you do that? <laughs> It's four to nothing Angels in the night. Look at this. A chopper back to Christensen. And the Angels don't get off the ground. And at the end of eight and a half innings, just like that. Angels four runs, nine hits, and two errors. The Yankees no runs, eight hits, and three errors. Vanilla and Mattingly and Weiniger. I'm a chauffeur. It's up to me to take care of the cars I drive. Armor All Protectant, my secret. I use it on the tires, the vinyl top, and inside on the dashboard and the seats. It helps keep things like new, even on this old classic. I do hope the master never sells her. They just don't make cars like they used to. Armor All. It's science, but it works like magic. I see your desk got a computer on it. Yeah, smart desk. Going to the game? Me, I don't need a computer. I just call Bert. What if Bert's not in? I wait till Bert's back. Who's playing? Detroit. You know, I don't know how I managed it before. Well, the machines and I just don't mix, know what I mean? Sure. I'll see you at the game. Yeah, actually, I've got a little more to do. Some people don't need an IBM computer on their desk. Is that you, Bert? The smart desk is for people who do. He's at the game. A new design in radial tires is rolling your way from Goodyear. Say hello to Vector. Oh, Vector? You fellas ever seen a tread like that? Goodyear's new Vector has a unique tread. Crisscross curves. What are they for? Traction. All season traction in snow and rain. Bells, you better along, Vector. Plus outstanding mileage down the road. Say hello to the new design in radial tires. Vector? This is our director. Vector, the new radial design from Goodyear. An NBC Sports Premier Event Series. History was made here. History will be made here. 
the French Open. Coverage begins June 3rd. As we go to the bottom of the ninth inning, Jeff Zahn has gone through eight, and those are his numbers. He certainly hasn't had to work too hard because he's been throwing so many strikes. It should be pointed out that Jeff had completed three of seven previous starts, but he does not have a shutout. He is against a team, however, that has already come up dry eight times this year. Pinella is two for three. Ball one. Pinella, then Mattingly and Weininger. Lou grounded to second, single to center, single to left. Strike. Pinella has always been a line drive hitter as he discusses Greg Kost's call of that last pitch. It's a rather interesting way to do it, leaning on the bat. It was only last year that Pinella hit his 100th career home run. He's really a marvel. He's been in pro ball since 1962, and he's lasted. And in the last eight years, his lowest average, 277. No wonder they decided to make him a hitting instructor. He's 40 years old. One and two. Strike three, and now he's really unhappy. <laughs> Goodbye. He has been kicked out of the game by Greg Cos. So he argued on the other strike and he has chased that's Gene Michael asking him to leave quietly and Yogi Berra now trying to make sure that Pinella doesn't do something that would get him suspended. So Pinella is steaming and he's also gone. Maybe we should have a designated swearer. You have a guy come off the bench to do the profanity, and that keeps you in the game. Take a look at it if you want to play umpire. The batter now is Don Mattingly. Ball one. The oh boy, you talk about dangling some participles and splitting a few infinitives. Lou Pinella did that with exclamation points. That's a strike. One and one. One out on the ninth, four to nothing, Angels. Zahn hasn't wasted anything today. Two and one to count, and Pinella now has cooled off and taken a hike. Two and one. Fouled off. Well, that sinker has really done a job. It should also be noted, by the way, that Pinella does not usually lose his cool to that extent in checking that long and illustrious career of his. It's only the second time in his career that Lou Pinella has ever been thrown out of a game. That's foul. Two and two. The executive producer of NBC Sports has never been thrown out of a game. That's Michael Weisman. The coordinating producer for NBC Baseball, Harry Coyle, the telecast of today's Game of the Week. Produced by George Finkel. He's questionable. I'm not sure whether he's ever been kicked out or not. Directed by Harry Coyle. Pre-game produced by Les Dennis. Pre-game directed by Mary Buda. And there's a fly ball to left field to Juan Beniquez. Mr. Jeffrey Zahn would certainly win the Miller MVP. A light beer from Miller. Happy to present a check for $1,000 in the name of Jeff Zahn to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. Our technical directors, Bill Toby and Salvatore Nagita. Feature producer, Antoinette Machiaverna. Associate directors, Joe Michaels, J.D. Hanson, Dave Hoffman. It has been a most exciting day of baseball, as it usually is, and Len Berman will wrap up the whole scene and put a ribbon on it in a few minutes, so stay right where you are. We'll also try, Joe is downstairs, and if we can, we'll get Jeff Zahn and his postgame comments. 
And we'll be looking forward to talking to many of you next weekend from Anaheim when the Angels play the world champion Baltimore Orioles. The Angels began the day in first place, a half a game ahead of Minnesota. Baltimore began the day ten and a half behind the phenomenal Tigers. But it's only the middle of May. Three and one. Brown foul. Three and two. John McNamara sent Zahn to do the job, and Jeff has been equal to it. It's four to nothing, Angels, in the ninth inning. He's uh, let's see, retired nine in a row. But break that, there's the base hit. Luis Sanchez gets up in the Angel bullpen. One of the problems the Angels had last year, you know, you look at a ball club in 1982, the Angels won a title. In 1983, they went up tied for fifth with Minnesota. And you say, why would a ball club go down the tube so quickly? One reason. They had only 23 saves coming out of the bullpen. That was one reason why everybody thought they might get gossip. One and one. Those 23 saves, by the way, that was a low in the major leagues. Ground ball wide at first. Knocked down as best you can say by Jackson. Throws and got him. Big play by Ron Jackson. And Jeff Zahn pitches his first shutout of the year. His 101st big league victory for a guy a lot of people wrote off when he was 30 years old and had won only six. At 37, he is now 101. Don't go wandering off. Joe will be with Jeff, I think, coming up after this. From CBS Sports, Game 7 of the NBA Finals. Six, the Los Angeles Lakers took the floor with the defense of their title hanging in the balance. A battered Isaiah Thomas performed heroically for Detroit. But it wasn't enough. The Lakers escaped with a victory, forcing tonight's dramatic seventh game showdown. This has been a series of startling contrasts from the friendships off the court to the fierce hostility on it. We've witnessed the youthful exuberance of the challengers and the poise of the champions. There's been hardship and pain, but not enough to overcome sheer guts and determination. These teams have battled to a standstill, and tonight their destiny will be determined. It's just a question of who can endure this final hurdle. hope to repeat history tonight while the Pistons hope to make some a championship is at stake and only one team's prayers will be answered it is June 21st we have reached the first full day of summer and a tough eight month war is about to come to an end inside the Los Angeles Forum the NBA basketball season comes down to a one game war and this crowd here tonight has not been a late arriving one as CBS welcomes you to the final game of the 1988 NBA Finals it's game seven the Detroit Pistons champions of the East against the Los Angeles Lakers the best of the West High above the floor here at the Forum, last year's championship banner. The Lakers tonight trying to become the first team to win back-to-back -back championships since the Boston Celtics did on this very same floor back in 1969. Don Nelson with a field goal that gave the Celtics their final margin of victory that night. And for the legendary Bill Russell, it was to be his last basketball game. And now tonight, the greatest winner of all time has joined us to see if the Lakers can repeat. Good evening, 
everybody and welcome. I'm Brent Musburger. So tonight when we end the seventh game comes to a conclusion either the Pistons or the Lakers will receive the Larry O'Brien trophy. The big story that everybody wants to be updated on Isaiah Thomas the star for the Detroit Pistons on Sunday afternoon he turned in one of the greatest quarters that anybody had ever seen and here he is warming up and getting loose for tonight's seventh game. He scored 25 baddest but I'm definitely going to try um, and take me up and put this some kind of machine on me with some electrodes and stuff and uh, just go from there. Have you been able to put any weight on it since Sunday's game. Uh, I haven't tried um, you know tonight would be the first time uh, they have me hooked up to this machine that supposedly takes you to your threshold of pain and uh, after that you're supposed to be able to deal with any type of pain that comes your way so uh, hopefully that's what these electrodes will do tonight. So he threw the crutches away a short time ago came out for the layup drill with the Pistons the first time he has put any weight on it and the team doctor of the Pistons told me if anyone can play tonight it's Isaiah Thomas he said he has the highest threshold of pain of any athlete he's dealt with and he has been dealing with professional basketball players for more than two decades. Now Dick Stockton I would guess that the question is what can the Pistons do if anything without Isaiah Thomas if he's forced to leave early I'm sure you and Billy Cunningham have some thoughts on that. Well Brent we do as a matter of fact I think the Pistons are prepared for other ideas such as Dennis Rodman in the backcourt and using some people such as Ralph Lewis and even Walker D. Russell to come in in short bursts if they need it but they're counting on Isaiah Thomas to play in this game and it's reminiscent in many ways to the time that Willis Reed marched on the court to the thundering cheers at Madison Square Garden in 1970 as the Knicks beat the Lakers in game seven then and Billy I guess everyone's question has to be can the Pistons without hundred percent Isaiah Thomas beat the Lakers in game seven at the four. Well I know one thing Pat Riley hopes that Isaiah Thomas is out on the court and I'm sure he'll start but he's experienced games in his career where the star isn't there and there's that ever so slight letdown of a ball club and there they go losing the ball club ball, ball game. But now you look at Detroit if Isaiah is only able to play a couple minutes I think everyone expects them to lose. So now all of a sudden it's a relief almost to the players and they'll go out there and have some fun. Many times teams rise another level because a teammate is not playing but of course they better rise another level the Pistons against the Los Angeles Lakers. Well what do the coaches have to feel about this game Chuck Daly he pinpoints one thing here. Leadership I think it has to come from Joe in the backcourt in particular to run the show uh, and I think uh, internally uh, bench wise and all I think Adrian will be uh, sufficient. We'll we'll have enough leadership. What's going to win it tonight for either team is going to be defense the best defense tonight all around and I'm talking about your team defense uh, and primarily your your individual defense when you take something away from them uh, the rebounding part of the game that's what's going to win and that's what we have to really concentrate on leadership 